This video tutorial is for the Pirano Convertible Bag by KMG Handmade. And just as the name states, it's a convertible bag, meaning you can wear it many ways. So the first way is to wear it crossbody with this crossbody strap. The other nice thing about a crossbody strap is you can also wear it just on your shoulder and wear it as a shoulder bag. So it's kind of like two ways in one. When you flip it over, you'll see this strap here, which has a zipper in the middle. You open up the zipper, that makes it into a backpack. If you zip the zipper closed, and you take one swivel hook off one of the D-rings and put it onto the other side where one of those straps are already connected, it makes it into a sling bag. You can unclip both those D-rings and put them onto the other side. So depending on it, if you're a left or right person, you can wear the bag whichever way you prefer. And the nice thing about it is on the zipper here at the back, it has this zipper underlay, which helps protect from the zipper when you're wearing it either sling bag style or cross um, as a backpack. It prevents this from rubbing against your body, so the zipper tape won't rub against your body. It kind of acts like a little padding there. It's a really nice little feature that I really enjoy. And I think going forward, if I make a sling bag, and or I want to make a bag into a sling bag, I'm going to use this technique and use this because I really like this because it does happen where the zippers will when you wear them on your shoulders as a backpack. Those zippers could, you know, rub into your body. So that's nice. It adds that bit of extra protection. So while I have the back of the bag laying this way up, I'm just going to unclip this so you can see. On the back of the bag, there is this slip pocket here. And this slip pocket will fit a phone. And my phone's a big phone and it fits in there. So you have that. You also have the handle that you can carry it with too. So there's another option for carrying the bag, just to carry it by the handle. On the front of the bag, there is this front zipper pocket, which has this hidden zipper here. And my phone also fits in there. But I'm one of those people that I worry about people getting into my bags if they're on my back. I wouldn't put my phone there. I would put it in the back or put it into the bag and have the zipper sort of off to the side that's closer to the side I would feel it. And I'd probably maybe put, say, some sunglasses or anything smaller that I'm not really concerned about if somebody does get into my bag. But the part of this with this overlay here being here is you would actually probably feel somebody getting into your bag because you kind of have to maneuver that out of the way to find the zipper. Once you look at the top of the bag, you'll see that there is two zipper pulls that you open the bag. And once we look inside the bag, we'll start on this side. From the inside of the bag, trying to... So you can see it's a bound bag, but on the inside of the bag, there's this tablet sleeve. Now I don't have a tablet, but I'll just show you. You put your phone in and it's held with some elastic so that it's adjustable that way that there's some elastic so if your tablet's a little bit bigger than this tablet sleeve here what it's cut to just a slight little bit bigger it'll still fit on the front of that there is this slip pocket so there's a little slip pocket right here so you can see it there my phone fits inside that slip pocket on the other side there is a zipper pocket and a key minder attached to the overlay how cool is that that there's a key minder attached right to the overlay so you can hook your keys on there or anything else that you want to hook on there that you need to have access to quickly and then the feature of the bag that's another really great feature is this beverage holder so it fits my water bottle and you can see this is a really tall bag this water bottle is a 24 ounce contigo water bottle and it fits in this bag so this is a really nice size bag and that beverage holder fits that bottle of water inside and when you're not using it the really nice feature of this water bottle holder i mean this beverage holder sorry i keep calling it water bottle because i'm looking at my water bottle the beverage holder is it just lays flat against the, the lining it doesn't go in your way or anything it's just nice and flat in there so i really like that 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 lays flat so it's not in your way and again this is a bound bag but i do walk you through all the steps of making this bag if you're doing binding if you want to make this bag like a birth bag you can watch my tutorial for the oasis backpack and i show you how to make that bag birthed method so if you want to make this as a birth bag you'll want to stop the video before you get started and watch that because the steps are a bit different and then when you get to the step to finishing you'll want to follow along with the oasis because the oasis is the same shape it's similar you'll be able to follow along with all those steps to be able to make this a birth bag, if you prefer a birth bag. However, if you've never done binding or you're a little bit leery about doing binding, I really do recommend giving it a try because I really like the shape and structure that binding gives a bag. 
and it's really not that scary and I do give a few tips in the tutorial. I'll also post a link to a little short video tutorial that I did for doing binding on a bag and I give a few little tips and tricks in that. And I just find that I've really learned to like binding. I like the way it looks when the bag is finished. I find it adds a bit of, I guess you could say skeletons or bones, where it gives a nice structure and, you know, it helps hold the bag up really nice. I really like it. And if it's not perfect, because honestly, if you look closely at mine, mine is not perfect. There is nowhere near, it's like not even close to perfect. But the way I look at it is when you're looking inside a bag, you don't see that. You don't really see that. And nobody's going to be looking that close at your binding so hey if you got it done kudos to you give yourself a pat on the back you did it it's as long as it's covering your seams you're great you're done so that is the bag there it is so we're going to make on this bag I'm gonna walk you through everything I'll share some tips and tricks along the way I will say that when I film the tutorials I do fill them as a sew along style tutorial so if there's anything that you don't really want to see just go ahead and fast forward through or watch this in a sped up um, uh, time so you can make this a bit of a faster video so do whatever you want fast forward however you want this is done as a tutorial a sew along tutorial so that anybody who is new to bag making they can follow right along i don't go too fast i take my time i go really slow so that you can follow along and it's easy to understand so now that i've shown you the bag and we're ready to get going let's get started on making our perano convertible bag so the first thing you want to do is read through the entire pattern before you start cutting your pattern pieces. There is some information regarding interfacing such as cutting your foam smaller and there is also an alternate device sleeve which I will be showing you in this tutorial how to do. So you'll want to refer to the information in the pattern for what pieces to cut if you're doing the alternate device sleeve because there's some pieces that you won't need to cut if you're doing that one instead. So once you have read through the entire pattern, you can go ahead and print your pattern pieces. Make sure you're printing in Adobe and you're printing to actual size and that your one inch square does measure one inch accurately so that all your pieces um, line up correctly and when you go to assemble, everything fits perfectly. Once you have that all printed and cut out, you can go ahead and start cutting your pattern pieces and attaching your interfacing where they need to be attached. The other thing I've gone ahead and done is made some marks. So for example, on one of my zippers, because I did read through, I saw that there were some marks that needed to be made on a zipper. So I went ahead and did that. I marked the centers on some of my pattern pieces. So you'll notice here, I've marked the centers on my exteriors. So I went ahead and did the center marks. And the other thing I like to do is mark what the letter is of the pattern piece so that when I get to that step, I know exactly what pattern piece I need to grab. I'm not trying to dig through because there are quite a bit of pattern pieces here. So I don't want to get confused. So I did put the pattern pieces on the back of all the pieces that I cut. So this one is Q because as you can see, there are some that are very similar in shape and size so I don't want to get confused so I've gone ahead and did that as well as marked my centers and my quarter markings and I marked where the T is as well for the top of the pattern piece just so I know which way to put this when I do go to assemble. Another thing I did was for the crossbody strap I went ahead and did some pressing. There are some marks that I couldn't make. I have to wait until we construct the bag to do those marks so I will be doing that off camera and speaking of off camera I don't show any pattern pieces, no rulers, no cutting mats, no nothing on camera. I don't give any measurements including seam allowances. This is for the protection of the designer so that I'm not giving away any pattern information so you will need to have your pattern open on your device so that you can follow along because I will refer to seam allowance given in the pattern or marks given in the pattern so you'll want to have your pattern open so that you can refer to that when we get to those steps however I do show you how to do everything I just don't give measurements the other thing I went ahead and did was I also cut my zipper overlay out so you can see I've cut it out and I've also punched the holes there for where that's needed to be punched so I've gone ahead and done done that too this just helps save a little bit of time all these little extra things that I've done it just helps save me some time when I'm filming but as I said there are some things that I will have to stop the camera go off camera do and then come back but I will show you all the assembly without giving measurements or uh, seam allowances or showing pattern pieces so once you have everything interfaced and you have everything ready to go we can get started on making our bag all right, so now we're going to create our convertible strap. So for these steps, we need our convertible strap zipper guards. So that's piece Q. We also need piece M, which is the convertible strap zipper underlay, our convertible strap, and then our convertible, or sorry, our convertible strap zipper, and then our convertible straps. 
So once we have this all, we can get started on the zipper. So the first thing you need to do is make a mark on your zipper, and I've already gone ahead and done that. And if you haven't trimmed your zipper to the length that you need, you can go ahead and also do that now and install your zipper pull. So once you have the marks made, we're then going to open up our zipper. And there's the mark that you made from the end of the zipper up. We're going to pinch the zipper at that mark and fold it back at a 90 degree angle. And I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel that I show this in more depth. I will post the link to that below in the description of this tutorial so that you can stop the video and you can go see this video for how to turn the zippers under. Um, you can watch that and then come back and continue on with making your zipper. So that's how it looks. You can see it's turned. So all I did was I pinched it at that mark. So when you pinch it, you're literally just folding it back onto itself like that. Then once you have it pinched, take that zipper, the teeth where it's pinched and the teeth and line where it's pinched up with underneath the teeth, just like that. So you can see where it was pinched here and the teeth and it's right underneath the zipper teeth. And that gives you that perfect, nice 90 degree angle zipper and it'll look like that. And what you're doing here is you're just creating a stop so that your zipper doesn't come off the zipper tape. So the zipper pull won't come off because you've turned it like that. So now what we're going to do is stitch the sides here where the zipper is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I do have a pin in here. And what I do for that is I just hand crank over the zipper teeth, I mean the uh, pin and the zipper teeth so that I don't accidentally hit the pin. And once I get over the pin, I then pull the pin out and just continue stitching. And this way here, I don't risk hitting the pin with my needle and causing damage to my machine or causing a needle to break or anything like that. Repeat that for the other side. So again, just hand cranking over that needle. I'm just cutting all my threads. And that's what it'll look like once you have them turned. So that's the wrong side and that's the right side. You can go ahead and trim this so it's even with your zipper tape. That is all complete now. Next we need to take one of our swivel clips and we're going to place it on the opposite end of the end we just turned under. And you also need to make a mark for where to place this. I've gone ahead and done that, so I'm placing it at that mark I made, folding it over like this, so you're folding it so that the wrong sides are touching, clip it in place, then once we have this clipped in place we're going to baste this to itself, so baste the zippers together that we just folded. Be careful not to get close to your hardware.
how it's going to look once you have that basted. So you have the end with your zipper pull and then the end with your swivel hook. Now we need to grab our convertible strap guard. So that's piece Q. And you're going to fold the short edges in to meet the center. So I'm just going to give this a little press to create a little crease. You can also mark the center if you want. And you're just going to fold them into the center where that crease is or the line that you made. So just like that, so there'll be no raw edges. And because I'm using a material that cannot be pressed, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. So again, I will fold these short raw edges into the center, just like this. So into the center, Oops. so there's one side and then the other side. Just like that. So you have no raw edges on one side and then raw edges in the center on the other side. I'm going to do that with the second one. And this time before I take the tape off, I'll press it. Just like that. And again, if you used a material like quilting cotton for this, you don't have to worry about using double-sided tape. You can press this with your iron. So that's how it'll look. So now you're going to take these and you're going to place them over top of those basting stitches just under your swivel hook, just like this. And I'm going to use some tape to hold it in place and then I'm going to sew this down. And this will help cover those basting stitches. And it also covers the side here where we folded the zipper back on itself. It's going to cover that up as well. And I'm going to try to line them up on both sides. So I'm just looking at what I'm doing here and I'm just lining them up on both sides so that they meet and they're at the same height. And it'll look like that. So when you zip your zipper, it stops at this guard, just like that. You can put a clip if you want temporarily a couple clips just to help hold it in place. I'm going to do that just temporarily until we get to the next step. Just like that. All right, so now we need to take our convertible strap zipper underlay and there's some marks you need to make so you'll want to go ahead and make those marks. Once you have the marks made you can then again if you're using a quilting cotton or material that you can press you can press these with your iron. If you don't you will need to use some double-sided tape on the ends
forgotten to make marks on one end, so I'm just lining it up and folding it up to the mark on the one beside. So both the short edges are folded and pressed. And again, the measurement for where you're making this mark is given in the pattern. Now we're going to fold these long raw edges so they meet, just like this. And again, I'm using a material that can't be pressed, so I'm going to have to use double-sided tape. And you're just folding these in half so these long raw edges meet. It'll look like that. You'll have one with a raw edge and then the folded edge. Just like that. Now we're going to grab our strap, or not our strap, our zipper, and we're going to place these on the back side of the zipper, but you're going to place them so that the folded edges meet in the center. And when you do this, there will be some overhang along these long edges of the zipper, and that's okay, don't trim it, leave it, because it will be hidden when we attach our straps. But you want this to meet in the center. So what you want to do is apply some double-sided tape along the length of your zipper. I'm out of tape on this roll. Put some tape down the wrong side of the zipper along the edge and then line this up so I'm going to line up the zipper overlay with the top of that zipper guard that we placed on earlier and you want this hole to be in the center so right down the center of the zipper teeth. And again don't worry if there's some of the zipper underlay overhanging the edge of the zipper, that's okay. See how mine has some, you can just barely see it sticking out of the side, that's okay. That's what we want. Where is the end? going to be a lot of double-sided tape used just to hold everything in place. So again, line this up with the guard and then have these two zipper underlays touching so that they meet in the middle. So line up the folded edge of the zipper underlay with the edge of the guard at the top. 
and then have everything meet in the center. And Kristen's reason for this, oops, Kristen's reason for this is so that when you're wearing the zipper as a crossbody strap or wearing it open, the zipper teeth, so when you wear this open as a backpack, this protects the zipper teeth from rubbing on you. So it just makes it so that it's kind of cushioned and you don't have the zipper teeth rubbing on you. I'm going to now base this in place just down these edges here. And remember you've got a lot of bulk up by that zipper um, guard. So you want to be careful when you're going up there and take your time sewing over it. You may need to use a hump jumper. Remember there is hardware so you have to be careful when you're getting close to that hardware. I've basted that in place so as you'll see when you open up the zipper that guard just acts the overlay or underlay sorry just acts like a guard to protect the teeth from rubbing against you and you can see they meet in the center now we need to take our convertible strap E so these pieces here they're long pieces and as you'll notice I've already gone ahead and pressed mine so there's a, a measurement given in the pattern for the short ends where to press them so I've done that on both edges and because I'm using quilt and cotton I folded them in half pressed in towards the center for the other for the long edges after I folded in half I pressed them in towards the center and I folded them again if you're using a material that doesn't fray you'll just have them folded in half and you'll have the one raw edge and that's okay if you're using that material but if you're using quilt and cotton you will need to cut them I uh, fold them this way so that you hide all the raw edges so now you're going to put some double-sided tape again on the zipper and then we're going to align the strap over top of the zipper and there's a measurement for how far over the zipper this needs to be so you'll want to check the pattern for that and ensure you have it at that measurement and there is quite a bit of bulk here so again you may need to switch to a bigger needle you may need to use a walking foot or a humper jumper to get over the bulk depending on your machine you know your machine the best so I've got the double-sided tape there, so now I'm going to pull the double-sided tape back from one side and I'm going to align that raw edge up 
or the folded edge up with that raw edge at the top where that strap guard is. I had to look and see and make sure I was calling it the right piece because there's so many pieces to remember. And you want to line it up just as Kristen says in the pattern. This is definitely going to be the most consuming, time consuming part of the whole pattern. This is the first time I've ever done a strap like this, so I find it really exciting. And now I'm going to apply some double sided tape right down the length of this strap. And I'm going to press this with my nail just to make sure it's pressed really good. use some double-sided tape and I'll place it down the length of this one side of the strap that's not attached to anything and that way there when I fold this over I don't have to worry about it shifting on me when we top stitch this Another thing you want to do is trim these corners of your strap so that they don't show. So I'll show you that in a second. corners that you're trimming are where you folded and you're just trimming them on an angle and that keeps that out of that area so you don't see it. So see how I folded them or cut them and then when you fold it that doesn't stick out. You don't have the little pokey outies. And I'll do that on the side even though I, I attached this I can still unfold it and I can still trim it off. And it doesn't have to be perfect fold that back up now I'm going to fold this side over and what I'm doing here is I'm checking to make sure that it all lines up. And you can kind of feel where the zipper, where the strap is too. If you feel through, you can kind of feel where it is. Like I like to push my, my nail and feel if my nail meets on each side. And that's how I know this is going to be lined up evenly on both sides. And I'm just going down the entire length of the strap, making sure it's folded all the way down. fingers more than it wants to stick to my material. And that's how the one side will look. So there's the, oops, sorry that was really loud. So there's the wrong side of the zipper, there's the right side of the zipper and you can see the strap goes all the way down. So I'm going to repeat that for the other side.
first I will trim this. I don't have to do that after I stick it down. And again, aligning this top edge with the top edge of the zipper guard. see it's all lined up. This guard here lines up with the top edge of these straps. And then we'll place double sided tape along the edge. And again, you don't have to put the double sided tape. If you just want to use pins, you can use pins or clips. Choice is really yours. I just like using the double sided tape to hold everything in place, makes it easier. Now, same thing as I did on the other side. First, I'm going to trim these few threads that are there. Now, as I did on the other side, I'm going to align it up, line it all up. Again, this is the longest part of making the bag. This takes a lot of time, it's very time consuming, but it is worth it to have a nice, even strap, have everything all nice. That's what it's looking like so far. So you can see when we unzip it, we will have two straps. And when you zip it together, you'll have one that you can wear as a sling. 
So now what we need to do is top stitch these. And in order to top stitch these, you're going to start at the ends without the zipper. So up here, you're this loose end here, you're going to start here and you're going to top stitch all the way up. And when you get up to this hardware, you're going to stitch as close as you can to the hardware without hitting the hardware and then come back down. So you want to stitch all the way around. And when you're stitching here, just make sure your underlay is still under there and nothing slipped out. So I'm going to change no, I'm going to leave this um, presser foot on. I was going to change it, but I'm going to leave it on. And I'm going to stitch, top stitch, the entire edge, all four edges of this strap. And remember, there is quite a bit of bulk up there under the hardware, so you do want to be mindful of that when you get up there. You don't want to hit the hardware, so just go slow when you get up to the side where the hardware is, and all that bulk as well. You may need to hand crank if you're feeling that your machine can't do it, try a bigger needle. Um, that may help. So you may need to backstitch a little and then continue on. So you know your machine the best. Just take your time and you'll get it done. careful when you're coming up to where the zipper is as well that your zipper pull isn't if it's a dangling that it isn't dangling under where your needle can catch it Approaching where all this bulk is, so I'm just going to go really slow and ensure that I get as close as I can. I'm going to hand crank here. I have a feeling I'm pushing my machine past its limits here. If you're noticing that some of these raw edges are starting to stick out, I'm just using the end of my scissors, but you can use any tool that you have to push them back in. Even my machine is not happy with what I just did. So I'm going to oops, pull my threads. to start on the other end and go back up the other side and see if I can get that way because there is quite a bit of bulk there. straps and vinyl and I'm glad I did. Now I'm wishing I had went with quilting cotton for my underlay. But I'm 
thinking I might be okay going this way now. Oops, of course I ran out of bobbin thread. So I'm going to wind my bobbin and we'll start again. And I'll show you what I do when I run out of bobbin here too, just so that you can see what I do there when I run out of bobbin, especially when you're top stitching. So I'm going to wind a bobbin and come back and we'll continue on. All right, so what I do when I run out of bobbin while I'm top stitching is I unpick a few stitches. Don't cut the threads, just unpick a few stitches. And because I'm doing this on a busier fabric, I'll stop where the fabric is kind of busier so you don't see it as much. And then I have the threads that are long, these long tails, so I'll pull them to the back side and tie them off. Another thing you can do is take a needle and thread them through your material so that you pull long tails through the material and then you don't have the little knot here you'll have it pulled out through somewhere else so I will leave that and I will do that later I don't need to do that on camera this way here I don't have a knot so much here it's kind of pushed out through over there you don't feel it as much or see it as much when you have your little knot tails so that's how I do that so now I'm going to continue on top stitching and again I'm going to leave long tails and then I'm going to do the same thing I did here uh, actually no I'll back stitch I'm okay with back stitching here because it is a busier print but if it's not leave long tails tie it off and pull it through just as I did there and my raw edges are sticking out a little bit so I'm just pushing them back under I think we're going to have more luck going this way, or I hope anyways. glad this actually happened because it shows that all machines are different and if I did this with my industrial machine it would definitely be okay but I like to film my tutorials on this machine just so that it's as close to the machines that anybody can use and when I run into problems such as this I can give you tips and tricks for how to deal with it depending on if you're using a domestic or whatever machine you're using. And I'm just back stitching here just to really make sure those stitches are locked in. And it's over a busier part of the fabric so I wasn't too concerned about the back stitching showing. But if you don't want the back stitching showing, just do what I had mentioned earlier, which is pull the threads, leave long tails, pull the threads to the back. just want to find which one is my back stitching thread so I can pull those other tails through later. Actually I think I'll be okay to cut the threads here because that knot I made is now in within the back stitching. Whew, that was a lot going on there. So that's how it looks so far with the one side top stitched. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other side and I'm going to trim my threads. I'm 
I almost didn't think this was going to get through it. So if your machine does struggle with bulk, normally this machine is pretty good, but because there's hardware here, it's having a hard time going up. I do recommend using quilting cotton for all of this so that it is a bit thinner in this area and you don't have so much bulk. So again, starting at the bottom of the strap and working our way up. And because I know what happened the last time, I'm going to go the opposite way this time. where your zipper pull is, just be careful that it's not in the way. I'm just tucking those raw ends under. Another reason why I hand crank is it just makes it so that the machine isn't struggling too much. If I'm feeling that it's going to hit my plate underneath the needle plate, I can stop because I feel where it is. So I can actually move, but when you're sewing and you're pressing with your foot pedal, you can't feel and that'll hit and break a needle. So this way here I can feel when there's resistance there. And you can adjust your fabrics according to where your needle is. So for example, right there I could feel a little bit of stress. for a very interesting tutorial, if I do say so myself. Oops. It shifted on me, so I'm going to unpick these stitches. This is a little bit frustrating. stitches at the top and come back and we'll continue on. All right, so I was able to get back over this. I lined it all back up. I think just with all the pulling, it pulled it so that it wasn't staying lined up and I was having raw edges show. Not something I like happening when I'm filming a tutorial. However, it happened. It's good for everyone to see that even when I'm filming, there are things that happen even to me. It's normal. So now I'm just going to keep top stitching this. Again, I'm approaching my zipper. I'm just going to zip it out of the way. your threads.
this machine is just not happy today I think I pushed it a little too much and I should have went with my original plan to use quilting cotton here but I chose to use vinyl lesson learned so that is how it looks when it is all done you have it top stitched you have your straps and your zipper just like that so that's as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial you know your machine the best so use materials that you know your machine can handle I was hoping my machine would be okay with all the bulk here but I guess with so many layers it wasn't so don't be afraid to use all quilting cotton for this you can use all quilting cotton so that's the back that's the front now we need to attach our sliders and two more swivel hooks so I'll grab out two sliders and two swivel hooks We will slide the slider on so have this so that your zipper pull is facing up make sure your straps aren't twisted and put one of your sliders on so you'll slide it or one of your sliders on so you're going to slide the strap up through the slider and over back down over the bar just like that do that on both sides of your straps so both straps Then you're going to attach a swivel hook. So I like to leave these so that the sliders are faced up. And then I take my swivel hook and I insert the strap through the swivel hook so the swivel hook is facing up. So you can see the swivel hook pointing up, just like that. Now we're going to take the end of the strap I'm just going to move the slider up, take the end of the strap and feed it back up through the slider, over the middle bar and back down through. So it'll look like this in the center of that. And then this raw end here, or not raw end, loose end, will be sewn or riveted. So you can sew this or you can use rivets to hold it in place. I'm going to use rivets. So I'm going to stop the camera, punch the holes and install the rivets. But again, there's my swivel hook. There's my slider. I'm going to push the strap so I have some room here to put the strap through. So we'll create a loop here on the slider. Take the end of the strap that's loose but I push the bar so it's against the one side of the strap, just like that. So you can see it's here, it's against the strap, this side. So I'm putting the strap up between the bar and this side of the strap. So just like that, you can see all three there. There's the middle bar right here. Then I'm going to take this strap and put it back over the middle bar. So you're pushing that middle bar, if your middle bar moves, against your fabric. If not, you're just putting it down over the middle bar and that's what it looks like. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to rivet this in place. So I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to go install some rivets and come back and we will continue on. So I've attached rivets. If you don't have rivets or Chicago screws, you can, as I mentioned, sew this close, sew this to attach it. So you would sew a box and then you could sew an X in it. And that's if you don't have rivets or Chicago screws. And even if you do and you prefer not to use them, you can go ahead and sew around. So this is how it'll look. I'm just going to tighten these so you can see the whole strap. And when you're sewing, just be careful you're sewing the strap that you put over and under the middle bar. Don't attach it to the strap here because then you won't be able to adjust it. So before you sew it, have it clipped and then just check or before even before you rivet it, just check to make sure that you can still adjust it and that it adjusts right. So this is how the strap looks. So you have your two sliders, you have your zipper that divides that can make this into a backpack or to make this into a sling bag with your swivel hooks at the bottom and then your swivel hook at the top and this will attach to a d-ring on the bag later when we assemble the bag 
So we can put this to the side for now. We're done with this strap. And as I mentioned, this is probably the longest part. And even with my machine struggling, it won't take you that long. Just use materials that you know your machine can handle. This was pretty thick. On my industrial, it would have been okay. But on this machine, it struggled a little bit. So I should have went with my original thought, which was to use all quilting cotton. I just decided that I wanted to use vinyl. A little bit of a regret now, not something I wanted to have an issue with while filming a tutorial, but it is good to see that even I struggle with things and I have to do things to make my machine work, so do other little tips and tricks to try and get my machine to work. So we're going to put this to the side and we're going to move on. So for these next parts, or next steps, we need our crossbody strap. So this is my crossbody strap. I have taken it and I've already folded the long edges so that I folded it in half. Then I took the long edges and folded them in towards the center and then I folded it all in half again and I gave it a press and that's how you'll do that. So one more time, fold it in half so the whole length of the strap, the raw edges meet, then fold those long edges in to meet that center fold and then fold it again so all your raw edges are enclosed in the strap. If you're using vinyl, you can't press this, so you'll want to use, or cork, full leather, anything that can't be pressed. You'll want to use some double-sided tape to help hold that. The short edges also have to be pressed in towards the wrong side, and the measurement is given in the pattern for that, so you'll want to refer to that. However, I do do that part a little bit differently, and I'll link to it below in the description how I do this, so that you can watch that little video and you can maybe do your straps the same way. It just I just prefer this method. I just find it gives a cleaner look to the strap. You don't have to use it. You can follow the method in the pattern for folding those short edges in. Again, refer to the pattern for the measurement. So this will look a little bit different. And all I did, just to quickly explain what I did, just so you can see, is I took my strap and I folded it so that the right sides are together, and then I stitched just up to the halfway point from one end to the other using the seam allowance that was given for folding this down, and I stitched across just up to the halfway point. After I stitched, I cut this side on an angle, cut across, and then cut this corner. Be careful not to clip your stitching, just on an angle. And then when I turn this right sides out on both sides, poke out my corners. That's how it looks so far. Then I'm going to fold those long edges back in and under. And you can take this to your iron and you can give it another press. And this will work with vinyl as well. I've used this for vinyl straps as well. It works on vinyl, cork, full leather. It's a little bit bulkier, so just take your time, but it does work, I have tried it. And that's how it looks once it's finished. And again, I'll link to that below in the description, the tutorial for that, because I do go into a little bit more um, explanation for how to do this. A few more steps. My cat buddy is purring away as she watches because I have the camera open on my computer so she can see what I'm doing and she's watching the video as it's recording. And then anytime I move the mouse because I do have the pattern open so I can follow along and make sure I'm giving you all the accurate information as I make the tutorials. She watches the screen and she likes when the little mouse moves around. So now we're going to top stitch these straps. I wonder if you can hear her purring on the screen. I won't know until I go back and edit the video. But it is quite loud.
also have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for piecing fabric together if you don't have a piece that's long enough to make a strap for a crossbody strap. I'll also link that below. The strap hit her. She doesn't like that. So there we go, it's all top stitched. Now we need to add our slider and our swivel hooks as well. put this on our other strap you're going to put the strap up over the middle bar between the middle bar and the outside bar then over the middle bar you can add a rivet here or same thing as we did with the other strap you can sew a box with an X I'm going to add a rivet but I'm going to do that after because we need to rivet the other side where the slider or not slider where the swivel hook will be so once I have that clipped in place, I'm then going to add my next swivel hook. Then I'm going to take this loose end of the strap and I'm going to bring it back over the slider, up over the middle bar, and back down. And then once I have that back down through the middle bar, it'll look like this. So I'm going to adjust this so you'll, you'll have a piece that looks like this. And I have it clipped right now, but you would have sewn that or added a rivet. So it'll look like that. Now I'm going to add my final swivel hook. Same thing, it's facing up towards me and this is flat so the swivel hook, the slider is facing up and then clip it in place and again you can sew this or add a rivet so I'm going to go add a rivet, come back and then our swivel hook or sorry cross potty strap is complete and we'll be able to put it to the side and move on. Alright, so that's how it looks. Once you have it either sewn or riveted, you'll have your strap like this. And again, this strap can be put to the side. We don't need it right now. We'll put it to the side and we'll clip it to our bag when we're done. Now we can move on to the next steps. So now we're going to construct our rear exterior panel. So we need our panel A, our panel B pieces, the lining and the exterior, our handle, and we need two of our strap connector. Now I've already gone ahead and folded these and added the interfacing, but I will show you what I did so I'm going to put the clip on the other three so I don't lose them and I like to clip two of them together just so that I don't lose them so I will show you this when we get to that part of the pattern so to begin we need our two pieces that are straight edged at the top so two of the B panel and one, one of the B panel one of the A panel we want to clip them together along the straight edge 
and the lining will be shorter than the exterior. Don't line up the bottom round or curved edges just yet. We're not going to do that till we have it on the back panel. So don't worry about your curved edges not lining up. So as you can see, one of mine is shorter than the other. And we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we need to press this so they are wrong sides together, but what I like to do first to get a nice crisp press is I like to press my seam allowance open and then press my panel so they are wrong sides together. So I'm going to go to my iron and do that now and then we'll come back and we'll do some top stitching. Now that we have it pressed, we need to top stitch this seam and to top stitch it we need to top stitch just through the lining and this seam allowance. So you're not top stitching through the exterior, so move your exterior out of the way and top stitch just through the lining and the seam allowance. So you'll be stitching through the three layers, so the two seam allowance layers and the lining. Just like that so I've top stitched just through the lining we're gonna stick this off to the side for now and we're gonna move on if you're adding the handle you'll want to grab your handle piece if you're using a material like quilt cotton you can go ahead and press this with your iron however I'm using vinyl so I can't press with my iron this means I need to use some more of this trusty double-sided tape So we're pressing the handle into the center. If you're using a cotton, you will press this in half so that the long raw edges meet. So just like this, you take your long raw edges, fold them and press them so that they meet. And just a little tip, when I'm pressing my handle in, when I'm folding them or straps, when it's being folded in half again after you've pressed in the center, I don't line it up right with that center line. I like to give it a little bit of space between. And that's just because what happens when you fold this into the center, if they're both touching, you end up with some bulk when you fold that all in half again. And sometimes you can tell and you can see that in that seam. And it makes it a little bit hard to press it really nice. So if you leave that little bit of extra space, just a smidge, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, that gives it that room for the shifting and the bulk to lay flatter, if that makes sense, when you fold this all in half again. So you can see I've left just the tiniest little gap there. And that's when I push these together. You can see as I'm pushing it together, those are butting up against each other. And that's it, there we go. It makes it nice and flat and you don't end up with all this bulk in this seam here. So I'm going to clip these along the long edges that are folded together because we're folding that back in half again which is enclosing that, oops, can I make clip? Enclosing that raw edge. I think Buddy thinks this is the Buddy show. Oh, that's mine. Can I have that? I have learned to not fight her and take her off the table because she knows this is the only table in the house she is allowed on and if I take her off she just jumps right back up. So I've learned to not fight her and just leave her here and eventually she gets bored and leaves. So now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch the two long edges and again if you're not making the handle you're just skipping this whole step all together and then when I get to the next step after I'm done with the handle you'll continue on. So we're going to top stitch both these long edges with the seam allowance given in the pattern. No, people don't want to see that. Oh, you're looking. 
your tail. go my handles are all top stitched on both sides now put that to the side for a moment we need to grab our back panel a and in the pattern Kristen gives you some measurements to make down from the top and in from the sides you'll want to go ahead and refer to the pattern for those measurements because that is where we're placing the handle so I've already gone ahead and made those measurements now I'm going to place my handle at those lines so when you're placing it, you made a line that was down and you made a line over from the left side and the right side. I'm placing it so that it is placed at the line and I don't know if I can see it here. Uh oh, oh, here it is. I'm placing it at the line, but to the closer to the raw edge, not going in towards the middle, towards the raw edge. And depend, figure out how you wanna place your handle. I like to have my handle so this seam where we folded it this seam here. I like to have that so that's inside so that when you're holding the bag you see the nice clean finish edge. That's just a personal preference. But we're going to place it at those marks we made and then we're going to baste it in place. So place the one side, baste it in place. I've been sewing on my industrial machine since I got it and I'm so used to having to hand crank and not having the automatic up down button that I keep going to reach for it so I feel all confused right now so if you see me reaching and doing weird things it's just because I'm a little bit confused being that I've used another machine for a little while you get used to that so now we do the other side the same way we have to base that onto the other side but make sure your handles not twisted so take it lay it flat and then bring it around to where the other side is and then we're going to base that in place Again, line it up with that line and baste it in place. And I like to back stitch a few times just to really make sure for security, just to make sure it's really stuck on. And that's how it's going to look and don't worry right now it's kind of pulling the panel don't worry once we get everything constructed it'll stop pulling that panel especially once you get the foam attached or the two pieces attached with the foam in the middle that'll stop pulling that on you so now that that's done we need to take our oh, here it is panel that we constructed with the pocket and we need to place the back panel right sides up so right now i'm seeing it with the handle and we're going to line up the curved edges of this lining pocket with the bottom curved edges of our back panel. And I like to line up all my center marks too, just to make sure everything's nicely lined up. So I'm pinning it all in place. And I even have center marks from the pattern piece that I made on this, even though I trimmed off the top part, I still lined, made all those marks because when we do go to put this all together, these marks will be in the seam and I'll be able to see all these marks. So that'll make it easier for when I'm doing the final construction. All right, so just like that. So once we have this pinned, you then need to make some measurements and some marks. So you'll need to refer to the pattern for that to make the measurements and the marks. So you're marking some measurements and some lines here so that we can sew a pocket. So I'm going to go do that and then we will come back and we will continue sewing our pocket. So I've gone ahead and I've made those marks and as I was making the marks I moved the pins on the one side, took them off, then put them back, put pins back on to clip it in place to keep it all clipped together. So now we're going to sew on top of these lines that we made. So across, down, across, back up, and across. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and sew a second row of stitching at the top here, which I will, just to add some extra strength up here at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. 
Make sure your handle is flat when you're stitching by your handle so that it's not twisted or anything in the finished bag. Keep all your layers nice and flat. Now we need to take our piece, lay it so you're seeing the lining, remove your clips, and we want to trim around that pocket, just the pocket, so just that lining piece. So you're just going to pull this away from this exterior piece and we're going to trim this lining piece away. And I'm going to use some pinking shears. Just being careful. If you have duckbill scissors, that'll be really helpful to use here too. If you don't want to use pinking shears. Like that so we have it trimmed away so now when you flip this over all you have is this pocket here you don't have this extra bulk in your seam when we go to assemble the bag now we're going to take this exterior piece and we're going to fold it down and line up the curved edges and I have center marks again I'm going to make sure those center marks are all lined up and you could take this to your iron and give it a press if you didn't use something like I did for the handle like a material that can't be pressed but if you didn't use that kind of material and you used a quilt cotton you can go ahead and take this to your iron and press it I'm just going to finger press it right now and keep clipping all the way around Base these edges all the way down around and back up just these edges the three edges just to hold this down and I'm just finger pressing this with my hand just to make sure it's nice and flat and we're going to base this in place using the seam allowance that's given in the pattern There we are. 
Now we need to create our strap connectors. And as I mentioned, I already gone, had gone ahead and done that. So what you need to do is you'll have a piece that will look like this. I'm trying to get this to open back up. You're gonna take the long edges and fold them into the center so they look like that. So they're folded into the center. And you have one strip that has no raw edges here and the other side has the raw edges. Then I took a piece of Decoville light and I put it in between, just like that. This will give it some extra stability and strength in the strap connector so that it doesn't tear apart on you because it has that extra strength there. So that's how you do that. So once you have that, you just give this all a good press and you're ready to go. So again, long edges, fold it into the center and press and then fuse your Decoville Heavy if you used a material like I did that can be ironed. If you didn't, you'll want to use a pressing cloth between it or use some double-sided tape to help hold it in there. You can also use in the middle of strap connectors, which is what I used to do, um, some gross grain ribbon in the middle here and just use a glue stick to glue it down and that'll help hold it in place. And the gross grain ribbon gives it that strength as well. So I used to use that in straps, especially when I don't have Decoville even now, if I don't have any Decoville light, I will use that in my strap connectors and in my straps as well for that extra strength. And I also use them when I do vinyl or faux leather because it helps with the extra strength, but as well as the stretching, it'll stop them from stretching. So just a little tip. So once you have them pressed, you need your D-rings. And I just need to find my scissors. going to slide the D-ring onto the strap connector just like that and fold the strap connector in half and when you fold it in half you're concealing those raw edges. Repeat that for the other one. Clips to hold it. Now we're going to sew down the one edge, across where the hardware is, and back up the other side, just to hold this all in place. And you wanna get as close to the hardware as you can without hitting the hardware. And they will look just like that when done. Now we need to place our connectors in our bottom corners. So I'm going to pin it in place. And then we're going to sew these right over the lines we just made when we sewed the connectors. And you're placing them so the raw edge is in the corner, just like this show you just like that so the d-rings go up towards the center now we're going to base this in place and so up those sides and i'm just basting at the bottom first and then i'm going to stitch right over that previous stitching that i made and when i'm coming up here i'm noticing my seam allowance or my stitching is a little bit shorter, so I just shortened my steam, steam, um, stitch length so that I could get right back into that corner where I stitched up to the last time. Just like that, so I stitched here, I basted it at the bottom, then I stitched up 
across and back down and I'm right on top of that previous stitching. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, hold it where you can see it in the light. And I just stitched right over my previous stitching and that's why I had to take a shorter stitch length because if I didn't I would have been under that stitch length instead. So don't be afraid to change your stitch length to get it to be exactly where you stitched previously. There you go that's how it looks now we need to trim the corners so that it is even where the strap connectors are so that they are even with the bottom just like that so it'll look like this so there's one and there's the other and you have your handle attached and we have a little slip pocket I'll grab my phone and you can slip your phone and I have a pretty big phone it's like a brick and it fits in here nicely with lots of room so that's where the top of my phone is is right there and there's still plenty of room and it's nice because your phone will be right against your back when you're wearing this bag so you'll feel it vibrate less chances of anybody taking your phone because it's not in the front pocket so there's the exterior panel it is all complete I'm just going to trim my last thread we can put this to the side and move on to the next steps sorry before we move on I forgot to mention that we can Add some rivets or Chicago screws if you want. You don't have to, but you can add them if you want to your strap connectors and also here where your handles are. However, I'm going to wait until we attach the foam to this panel. We don't actually attach it. We slip it between the lining and the exterior, but I'm going to put my foam. I'm going to attach my foam centered on this panel and then I'll use the foam as some extra stability when I'm putting my rivets through because it'll rivet through to the foam. If you don't want to wait till the foam, you can use some Peltax or Decalville Heavy or even little scraps of foam just for some extra security behind here for the rivets to go through as well, especially down here on your strap anchors because it's just going through your um, quilting cotton if that's what you used or any of your other material. It just adds that extra bit of security. So you can use a piece of interfacing, so foam or Decalville Light or Decalville Heavy behind and then put your rivets through. But I'm going to wait till we do the foam and then I'm going to put my rivets in then. That's sort of why I forgot and moved on. So when we get to that step, I will show you what to do. Moving on, we are going to construct our front exterior panel. And for this, we need our remaining A panel. So the front A panel, we need the zipper, the zipper tabs, the, um, this is called the, hang on, the overlay, the zipper pocket overlay, which is piece R. And then we need the, this panel that we cut in half. So we also need this one. So I'm going to put these aside for now and we're going to start with our zipper overlay which is right here. So we're starting with our zipper overlay and for this we need to fold it in half and then we're going to top stitch this using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. across the folded edge and if you want you could use some tape here to help hold it together I'm just using clips to hold it together for now
There we go, it's top stitched. I don't know if you can see that, it's top stitched. So now we need our exterior A panel. And there's a mark that you need to make, which is given in the pattern, over from the left hand side, over. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for what that measurement is. Once you have that measurement, you'll want to use some double sided tape, and you'll want to place the tape beside that line all the way down from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to place the tape from the top all the way down. And then after we have this here, we'll then take this overlay and we'll place it at the line. Before you place your overlay, if you have a label or anything like that, that you want to add, you can go ahead and add that now. So I'm going to remove the paper backing. And then I'm going to place this overlay right along that line. And then we're going to sew along this raw edge here using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. Now we're going to cut this panel away along the raw edge of the overlay. And you're not throwing this out, you're just going to set this to the side for now. And you want to mark the centers on both sides. So I'm just going to use this because I already have the center here. Just like that. So I've marked the centers so that all my centers are marked. Now we're going to put this off to the side for now and we're going to move on to our zippers and you need your front zipper and your zipper tabs. So if your pull is not installed already you'll want to go ahead and install your pull. Then we're going to create a zipper sandwich. So you're going to take one of your exterior tabs and you're going to place it pretty sides touching the pretty side of the zipper. Put some clips. And this is going to be the short edges aligned with the zipper tape, the, the raw edge of the zipper tape. Take your lining, pretty size against the wrong side of the zipper, again, short edges aligning with the raw edge of the zipper, which is also aligning with the short raw edge of the exterior. Pin that in place. We're going to repeat that for the second set. So again, exterior, zipper tab, pretty sides touching the pretty side of the zipper, raw edge of the zipper aligned with the short raw edge of the zipper tab. Flip it over. I'm now looking at the wrong side of my zipper. Lining zipper tab, flip it so it's pretty sides against the wrong side of the zipper, short raw edges all aligned, and clip it in place. Then we will sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern.
And just a little tip, if you're worried about anything shifting on you, so for example, because we had added the exterior, then the zipper, then the lining, and you're worried about the exterior or the lining shifting on you, you can always baste the exterior first, then go and add your lining and then stitch that with the full seam allowance and that'll just make sure nothing shifts on you when you're um, sewing the panels together. Now we're going to flip these so that they are wrong sides touching and I like to place a clip on the end just like that. So flip them so they are wrong sides touching and just give them a press with your hand or your fingers. You could take it to your iron if you really want to, it doesn't really need it. Flip them so they are wrong sides touching and add a clip and then top stitch this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. trim all my threads even if it's on the end like this just so that no threads go poking through in the final bag and that's how it'll look once you have your zipper tabs attached and top stitch now we're going to take these lining pieces and we're going to find the centers of everything right now. Just so that we can get everything lined up. And I have already cut my lining in half, but if you haven't, you'll want to go ahead and do that so you have two pieces that look like this. Next, we need to grab our piece that has the zipper overlay attached, and we need to line this up, the zipper, so it is wrong so right sides together with the straight edge that has the overlay, and pin it in place. So that's why I made that center mark so I can line up all those center marks. And you want your zipper to be going up. So I almost pinned mine so my zipper was facing down, but you want your zipper to be going up. Almost did it. Would have made my zipper go upside down. Once you have this pinned in place, you're going to flip it and stitch along the previous stitch line. Right on top of that stitch line. Now, when you're approaching where your zipper is, I forgot to change that stitch length, so I'm just going to stitch back over that. When you approach where your zipper is, you want to move it out of the way There's my zipper pull again. I'm going to zip it out of the way. Why is this giving me a hard time? go our zipper is attached just like that 
Now we need to add one of these lining pieces. So you're going to place it right side down and centered. So I'm going to make the center marks. So now we're going to take one of these trimmed lining pieces and we're going to place it so it is wrong si right sides against the right si wrong side of the zipper, sorry. So just like this. So wrong side right side against the wrong side of the zipper. You want to use those center marks to line up the center marks. So you have your zipper sandwiched in between your overlay and the exterior piece. So it'll look just like this with a little zipper sandwich. You'll want to flip over and stitch on top of those previous stitching. I used a zipper pull that's a little bit too big. Just like that and when you get near your zipper pull just do what I did and zip it out of the way. Now we are going to take this piece and flip it so that the lining is wrong sides against the wrong side of the exterior panel and I'm just pressing with my fingers because this piece here my overlay is in a vinyl but if you've used all cotton go ahead and press that with your iron once you have it all pressed we're going to top stitch this right here this seam along the edge beside the overlay so right here along the exterior and make sure that lining piece is down so to make sure it's down i'm going to put some pins in place to hold it down just like that and that'll hold that lining down it won't come up on me while i'm top stitching And just remember you have a zipper pull. If you have a dangly pull, you want to make sure it's not in the way. I'm going to remove those pins. And that's how it's looking so far. So you have your exterior and on the other side. So if you had the other side of the pocket, you would see through to where the pocket is. Now, we need to take our other lining piece, flip this over. You want to clip your overlay out of the way for now, because we don't want to sew this at all. So just clip it out of the way. You're going to attach the remaining lining piece, lining up the center point on your zipper. So the lining is going to go right sides against the wrong side of the zipper. So I have this clipped down out of the way. So all I'm seeing is one, just the zipper. And we're clipping this lining piece to the wrong side of the zipper along this top edge. So there's that top edge of the zipper. I'm trying to show you. There's the top edge of the zipper, top edge of the lining. Nothing else is clipped, it's just the zipper that's going to be clipped in this. And then once we have this all clipped, we're going to sew this, oops, sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And right now, as you can see, I've created a zipper sandwich and when it's all 
pressed down flat, you'll see the two pretty sides of this lining piece are touching each other. And when I'm sewing, I'm just sewing through the zipper and that one lining piece, not through the zipper overlay. And I'm coming up, oops, coming up to my zipper here, so I'm going to zip it out of the way. that's how it'll look. Now I'm going to just take these clips off because I want my lining pieces to be flat and you want to trim this pocket piece so it's even. So what I'm going to do is just trace it with a pen. This is a removable pen, Frickson pen. And I wouldn't do this on the front of my bag because these pens can reappear and cause ghost lines when they get cold. I live where it gets really cold in the winter so they could reappear. So I only ever use these on the wrong sides of fabric or where you're not going to see it in the bag or just within the seam allowances, just like when I use my pencils. There we go, I've trimmed it. Now we're going to clip these all together. And when we sew these, You're not sewing this exterior piece, so keep that out of the way. But what you're going to do here is come under the zipper, go down, around, back up, and across. When you get up to the zipper, back across. You're not sewing through the zipper, just under the zipper tape here. And just keep this exterior piece out of the way. And you want to sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. Just like that, so when we open up our zipper, we now have our little zipper pocket. Next, we need to take the smaller side, so that piece that we cut off, and I wanna make sure that when I put it back together, it's going to somewhat line up. I mean, I know the overlay is over, but I wanna make sure I have this flipped the right way. So before you cut it, what you could have done was mark a T on the top of this piece too, but I can easily see how my butterflies are. They line up and we wanna clip that to the zipper. So again, I'm gonna fold this overlay out of the way and we're gonna clip this to the zipper, lining up those center marks and this is being clipped to the one we just sewed the last one that we sewed that lining to so you're going through that last lining piece we sewed and the zipper and you're clipping it all together and then you're sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern Approaching my zipper again, so I'm going to pull the zipper pull out of the way. Okay. 
Now I'm going to give this a press and then I'm going to top stitch this. Just top stitching through, oh, there's a thread here poking through. Just top stitching through, you're not moving the lining, you're just top stitching through the seam allowance and that exterior we just attached. unclip your overlay and you want to fold it over so it's covering the zipper and you want to baste it at the top and the bottom so you're basting it so it stays folded over that zipper Once you have that basted in place, we will then trim everything so that it is even with the panel. And your exterior front panel is done. You have your pocket sewn in and your overlay and it'll look like this. And it doesn't matter how messy the back is, but that's how it looks. And let's see, a phone will fit perfectly inside that pocket as well. That is it. We will put this off to the side and we will move on to the next steps. So moving on, we're going to create the basic rear lining panel. However, this is not the panel that I'm creating. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be sewing the alternate device sleeve, but I did want to walk you through how to create this. So my pieces will look a little bit different, but as I said, I just want to walk you through this. So for this, you will need one of your lining A pieces and your two B device sleeve pockets and then the trim, which I don't have any trim that is going to be the accurate size. So I'm just going to use a piece just so you can get the idea of what we are doing. So put your lining and your trim off to the side for now. You will have two B pocket pieces. Now these look different because again, I am doing the alternate device sleeve, but yours will have rounded corners on the bottom here. What you're going to do, if you haven't already, is baste your foam to your device sleeve, this, this device slip pocket. You'll want to baste your foam to it. Once you have your foam basted, you will then put this to the side. You will take your device pocket trim and using double-sided tape, or if you're using quilting cotton, you'll press with your iron, but you will fold it in half, just like that. Then you will clip it to the top edge of one of your device pocket B pieces. Then you're going to baste this in place with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you have that basted in place, you're then going to clip your other B pocket piece over the trim. So say my trim was folded in half like this, you'll pin this to the top so they are all sandwiched together. So you have the, the trim sandwiched in between and you will sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you have that sewn, and again, my pieces look a little bit different because I'm doing that alternate device sleeve. But once you have this all sewn, you will take this, you will turn it so that it is right sides out, so the wrong sides are touching and you're seeing your pretty sides, and you will top stitch along the top here, just along the top. Once you have that done, you can then take this here, baste this first together all around the curves. Once you have the curves and sides, so you go down the side, around the bottom and back up. Once you have that sewn and basted, you're then going to take your lining panel right sides up and take your device slip pocket and place it 
right sides up. So if you used a different fabric for your lining side and a different fabric for the exterior, make sure your exterior piece, the piece that's facing out, is up. You're going to place it down, aligning the sides, the bottom, and the edges, and the curves. You'll pin it all in place, and then you'll just sew this together, baste it all around with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Seeing as I am doing the alternate device sleeve, this is why I didn't sew this, we are going to now move on and I will show you how to create that alternate device sleeve. So now I need to grab all my pieces for that. So for the alternate device sleeve, I do need these two fabrics here, a um, trim, some elastic, and some slip pocket pieces. To get started, what we're going to do is take our trim, and there are some marks that you need to make for measurements. So you're going to go ahead and refer to the pattern for those marks you need to make the measurements on your trim. I've already gone ahead and done that. If you're using quilting cotton, you can press this with your iron. However, I'm using the vinyl, so I'm going to use double-sided tape here. Just like that and now we're going to fold this in half so once we have those edges pressed we're going to fold this in half so the long edges meet and I'm going to use some double-sided tape to hold it So once you have your trim folded in half, we're then going to center it to one raw edge of our slip pocket. And then we will base this in place at the top using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once that is basted in place or sewn in place, you're then going to place your second slip pocket piece right sides together so you're sandwiching that trim in between. And we're going to sew down the sides and the bottom, then sew just up to where your slip pocket trim is. So you're going to sew up beside that slip pocket trim. You're not sewing on the slip pocket trim at all. Just right beside it. And every time I approach a corner, I like to backstitch. I just find when I'm poking up my corners, it gives some extra strength there in those corners. sure I didn't catch my trim which I did a little bit here so I'm going to unpick some of the stitches and then re-stitch because I accidentally stitched over some of my trim here and you don't want to because you want that trim to poke out when we turn this right sides out there we go. now I'm going to cut my corners careful not to clip where your stitches are and sometimes I find I just need to trim a little bit more off the sides after I trim the uh, 
corners. This just helps it poke out a little bit nicer. Again, careful not to trim your stitches. Using your turning tool, poke out your corners. And then what we're going to do is once it's turned, it's turned right sides out, the trim will be facing down like this, but you can flip it. And as you'll see, when you flip it, oh, there's a thread sticking out there. When you flip it, you'll see that it causes the trim to poke up. That's what you want. And then once you have that, I'm just going to run my, oh, poke right through my corner. I gotta restitch that corner because I accidentally pushed my, I must have, I think I clipped the stitches when I was turning right sides out, or cutting. That's okay. Just re-sew your stitches and it's good as new. All right, so now what we need to do is take this piece in the back and we need to turn it and then cover up the previous stitches from when we stitched the trim to our first slip pocket piece. And when you're turning them, you're just going to do that. And you're going to fold this under. And this is where some double-sided tape is he helpful. You're just going to fold it under. I can't press this with an iron, so I have to press with my fingers. Fold it under and just to cover your previous stitches. So I'm going to use some tape to hold it down. And I'm going to run that tape along the trim. under those stitches. And I'm using my finger too to see where my exterior is, or the piece that's going to be on the exterior, which is going to be showing when the bag is turned right sides out. threads that you see poking out now, now is a good time to trim them. I'm just trying to flatten this as much as I can. There we go. Now we're going to top stitch across this. You want to top stitch that top edge closed. And the side that we folded under, so this side, which you can see which side is easier is mine because I used the lining fabric for the part that will be against the lining of the or the wrong side like the side you won't see I like to leave that as the side that goes against everything so that you don't see if there is any stitches that you can see you don't really see them because this is not facing out hope that makes sense so now we need to take this completed slip pocket and we need to attach it to one of our tablet sleeves and we need to center this on the tablet sleeve and once we have it centered we'll then sew around the three edges so to find the center I'm just going to fold this directly in half press it with my fingers fold this in half give it a press and then I'm just going to lay this on top and pin it in place I'm also going to fold it this way. I want to make sure that this is centered. You can use your ruler for this. However, I'm not using any marking tool or rulers or anything. So I'm just going to do it this way. Use some 
some pins, clip it in place, and then sew around those three edges. So bottom, sides, bottom, and then set other side. Backstitch really well at start and stop because there will be a lot of stress on this pocket. You don't want it to come apart while using it. So there it is, it's all attached. Now we're going to move on. And if you haven't already, you need to attach your foam to your remaining tablet sleeve centered. So I've gone ahead and done that. Then you'll need to make some marks for where we're placing the elastic. So you'll wanna go ahead and make those marks. Once you have those marks made, you'll want to center your two elastics at those marks. So center them to the panel so that you have the same amount hanging over both edges. You don't want to have one like this and then one like this. They need to be centered. Put them in place and then you're going to baste the sides. So you're going to base just the side edges. So now I'm going to baste those side edges just along the sides, the elastic through the tablet sleeve. You're not stretching the elastic either as you sew it. So avoid stretching it. Now we need to pin the elastics out of the way. So you're just flipping them over and pinning them in towards the center of the tablet sleeve. Just like that. Now we need to take the tablet sleeve with the slip pocket attached and place it so it is right sides together with this tablet sleeve that has the elastics attached to it. We're going to pin around all four sides. And when you're pinning, I like to put some pins right where those elastics are because we are going to be sewing right over them but we didn't want them hanging out because when we turn this right sides out, we need those elastics to be able to be poking out. So now we're going to sew the sides and the top and we're going to sew the bottom, but we're going to leave an opening in the bottom. You can leave it the same width as this um, slip pocket and you can see your stitching where your slip pocket was. So you can leave it that same width. So back stitch, sew across, up the side, across the top, back down the other side, and across, leaving that opening. And you'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. with the slip pocket 
pocket piece so I can see where my stitching was with the slip pocket piece. So I'm sewing it with that side facing up. And I'm where that elastic is. I'm just going to back stitch over it just for extra strength. because your foam is there go ahead and sew it the other way and just use a marking tool to mark where you start and stop to remind you where to leave that opening where you stop so off the fabric and on the other side if you didn't start off the edge of the fabric go ahead and go back and sew that so that it looks like that so you come up off the edge of the fabric and this will help make this when you turn this right side out it'll help it fold out nicer gives it a cleaner finish so cut your corners careful not to clip those stitches like I did when I made that slip pocket. But if you do, you can do what I did, which is just go back and sew that corner. We're going to turn this right sides out through that slip pocket, through that hole we left, that's underneath the slip pocket. And I'm just removing the clips as I'm going. Use a turning tool to poke out your corners. And be careful not to push too hard. You don't want to break any stitches in the corners. And I'm just using my turning tool to run it down the seams to help push those seams out nicer. going to I'm just going to fold this under now just to get it nice and crisp and I know where it's going to be I'm just finger pressing it you can take this to your iron and press that turning hole under if you prefer and you have these two smaller pieces of elastics you want to place them in So tuck them into the seam here. I'm trying to make sure they're tucked in an even amount. You can use your ruler here to make sure they're tucked in the, the same amount. 
and then using my clips, I'm clipping that opening closed. And if you find it easier, go ahead and use some double-sided tape here. If you find it easier or use pins, whatever's easier for you, go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to top stitch all around all four sides and closing these, closing this opening and also sewing those elastics into that seam, making sure they're caught in the seam. And that's why I'm pushing them in as well. You want, I want to make sure they're past the seam allowance just a little bit. So now I'm going to top stitch all the way around. Again, closing up that bottom seam we left. Just make sure when you're top stitching, you're not folding the elastics under like this and catching them. I almost did that. That's what made me think of saying that to you. You don't want those folded under. You want them to be sticking out. Looks like little legs sticking out the side. Now we need to take this finished sleeve with the slip pocket facing up and place it on top of our lining A piece. You want the bottom elastics to be flush with the bottom of the panel and you want to try and get this centered as much as possible. Well, not as much as possible. You want it to be centered. Put these in place. second row of stitching so I need to go and make those marks for the second row of stitching so I'm going to stop the camera go make those marks for the second row of stitching on these elastics so it's going oops trying to place it back it's going up from the bottom and you have to make a second row of stitching here so I'm going to go make those marks come back and we will continue with sewing the device sleeve now that I've made those marks at the measurement given in the pattern I'm going to go sew that right on top of that line Now we need to base the elastics to the sides, so clip them, oops, clip them in place and base them to the sides. So these side elastics are now being basted to the sides. And I'm back stitching quite a bit with these. I know they'll be caught in the seam later, but just for some extra security. Clip all your threads. And there you have it, your device sleeve. I wish I had a device to show you, I only have my phone. Your device sleeve is done, so you can see if there was a device in here, it would catch it at the bottom and it would hold it, and it won't fall out. An interesting device sleeve helps reduce bulk in your seams if you're worried about bulk in those seams. This helps reduce the bulk. Another technique to use for any other pattern that you may want to add a device sleeve to, this is a great technique. And I also like that there's the elastic still loose back here. You could slip it into that as well, and that'll hold it as well a little bit more. 
So that is done. We can put this to the side and move on. So now we're going to continue with our front lining panel. For this section, we need our zipper pocket overlay. So this piece that has our a key minder on it. We need our lining panel A. We need our beverage loop, our beverage loop connector, the foam for the beverage loop, zipper pocket, and the zipper as well. We also need a swivel clip and a rivet. Starting with the beverage loop, we're going to take this with it facing right sides up and we're going to fold the long sides so they are right sides together and then we're going to sew this long top opening across using the seam allowance that's given in the pattern and you want to just sew the top not the sides Now turn this right sides out and we're going to slide this seam actually before I do that because I'm using a material I can't press what I'm going to do is place some double sided tapes on, tape on each side of the seam and then I'll press it down so that that stays nice and flat when I turn it because we're going to be taking that seam and placing it in the center of the bottle or beverage holder. So I want this to stay nice and flat. This will help. So I'm just putting some double sided tape just under that seam so that I can press it down. If you are using quilting cotton you can go ahead and use your iron to press this open, this seam open. I'm using double sided tape because I'm using a vinyl and I can't press with my iron. This is not something you have to do. This is just because I won't be able to get it pressed nice. Now I'll turn it right sides out. You want to push that seam that's why I was pressing it you want to put that seam into the center then you want to take your foam and slide it in there center the foam as much as you can so just with your fingers feel if it's centered and I'm saying centered lengthwise here so between this not the width it's not it should give a little bit of space there on each side so you can see the foam doesn't go the whole length and that keeps that out of the seam allowance once you have that done add some clips or take it to your iron and press it I can't do that and then we're going to top stitch this And you're top stitching the whole length of the beverage loop.
there it is. Now we're going to put that to the side and grab our lining. And my lining is already cut, but what you need to do is measure and make a mark over from the left hand side. And there is a measurement given in the pattern for what to do. And I've already cut mine away. So you'll cut that away and you'll save it for later. So this small side, save it for later, put it to the side. Now you want to mark the center points. So make sure all the center points are marked as well. So I have center points already marked. And because I want these to line up because there are directions, directional prints on this fabric. I want everything to line up in the end. What I'm going to do is put a T here and a T here. And this will let me know where the tops are of these pieces. Oh, oh, I actually already marked it at the top here, but that would be upside down. So just like that. So now we're going to take this beverage loop and we're going to line it up with the top of that center mark. So the top of the beverage loop is going to line up with that center mark. And your beverage loop right now is wrong side up. So right now what I'm seeing is that seam and we want that to be facing up. So the right side of your beverage loop is against the right side of your lining. We're going to base this straight edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we need the beverage loop connector, so I just want to make sure I'm grabbing the right thing. Uh, so the beverage loop connector, we want to grab that and we want to place it right side down against the longer edge here. it in place and then we will sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern So now we're going to pull it away from the seam, so just like this, push it away from the seam, and then we're going to top stitch through the beverage connector loop, connector and the loop and the seam allowance. So you're going to leave this facing this way, so you're going to press this and we're going to top stitch. So you're going to top stitch through the connector and the loop. Don't pull this this way, the loop stays over here for now. And if you used a quilting cotton, you can press that with your iron. You'll notice I'm going very slowly here because I want to make sure everything stays flat and that I'm catching that seam allowance underneath that I'm pressing over as well. Again, the, the beverage loop is staying over towards the right. I'm not top stitching through that yet. I'm just top stitching through where it is in the seam allowance. we're going to take this beverage loop and bring it over to the connector and line up the raw edges and clip it in place. 
And you want to make sure it's straight, so line up the top edges of your beverage loop together, just like that. And then we're going to baste it to the side of this beverage connector. My thread came out of my needle. looking so far. Now we need to take the piece we cut off and remember we marked a T so we know where the top is and we want to place it right sides together with the beverage loop container, a uh, connector I mean, container. <laughs> and you want to match up those center points as well. And you'll know where your center points are because the top of the beverage loop connector is a center point. Clip it all in place. And then we will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. All the way down the side. So now we're going to fold this so that it's away from the beverage loop connector and we're going to top stitch this. And again, if you've used all quilting cotton, go ahead and press this all with your iron. So now I'm going to top stitch that seam. that you may need to make from the top down so you'll want to refer to the pattern for that so I'm going to go ahead and go make my marks and then I'll come back and we will continue on so I've gone ahead and made my marks and the reason for these marks is because this is where the zipper pocket overlay is going to be and we're going to be clipping into these stitches and what you want to do is reinforce those top stitches so they don't come undone so I'm going to go ahead and stitch at those marks overlay and we need to fill a feed our swivel hook onto this tail of the zipper pocket overlay and then you need to using those holes add your rivet don't have a rivet you could always sew right where that mark is there we go now we need to put some double-sided tape onto the backing 
of our zipper overlay. Remove the paper backing from the tape. You can fold your zipper overlay in half, but first I'm going to fold my lining in half, just so I know where the center mark is because I want this to be centered on my panel. And I also already made that mark that we need to place this at. So if you haven't made the mark for where to place your zipper overlay on your lining panel, go ahead and do that now. It's in the pattern for how far down this zipper overlay is going to be placed. And you're placing it right at that mark and centered. Now you can go ahead and cut the center, but before I cut it, I like to stitch the outside of this overlay just so nothing um, shifts on me while I am cutting. So I'm going to stitch the outside box, so just the outside edges of my zipper overlay. However, again, in the pattern, Kristen does have us trim away this piece here in the middle. So you trim away the back, but I'm going to tip top stitch the outside first. So I don't back stitch. What I do is leave long tails and I start stitching. Leave those long tails, start stitching. And I just went really slow when I was near the rivet and that swivel hook. just so that I didn't accidentally hit it. But it is enough clearance for you to get by. If you're worried about it, a zipper foot is really helpful for those tight areas. So once I get around this corner, I will be back where I started. And when I get back to where I started, what I do is I stop right directly in the hole that I started in, pull my threads, leave long tails, and then I'm going to pull these tails. So all I do to do that is I just give a pull on the back tail and that pulls a little loop to bring the front one up and I pull it through. And now I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm going to tie these all together. Instead of tying two separate knots, I'll tie one knot. So it'll look just like this. I have no back stitching. However, if you're using a print that you're not really worried if you see the back stitching, you can go ahead and back stitch. Now we need to cut that hole down the center. And then this is where I like to use duckbill scissors because we're going to go and trim away that excess behind this overlay. And that's why those stitches were really important in the beginning, especially if you are cutting that away before you sew your zipper pocket overlay on. That'll stop those stitches from coming unsewn that you made when we attached that 
connector. So I've trimmed that away. It doesn't have to be pretty, just as long as you have your opening there. So if you've done this before you've stitched, you won't have stitching, you would have cut that away and then stitched this. But as I said, I like to stitch it first because that helps hold it in place and I don't have any shifting on myself. Now that I have top stitched, we are now going to grab our zipper pocket and our zipper. So you're going to take your zipper pocket and it is going to be right side up and your zipper will be at the bottom edge and the zipper is also right side up and you want your pull to be facing to the left when closed. So I'm just flipping this just so I can clip. Clip this in place and then sew this using the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. I'm just going to move this. So sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern and if you used a longer stitch length for anything that you did there, so top stitching your um, zipper pocket overlay, go ahead and return your stitch length back to the length you used for stitching. I know I mention that a lot, but sometimes we forget and it's a good little reminder. Clip your threads. So it'll look like this. Now we're going to press this seam just like that. And now we're going to fold the pocket so that the linings are right sides together and align that zipper tape to the top edge of the lining. And you're going to sew this one with the seam allowance given in the pattern. zipper every time I approach it because often a zipper will cause kind of a little bump or a wave where the pull is so I just like to zip it out of the way even if my presser foot can squeeze by it. My machine unplugged. There we go. Now with the zipper pocket flat I'm going to press that flat. We want to cut along this bottom folded edge. So just take your scissors and cut along it. When you open it up, you will have the top piece that is longer. So I'm going to write a T on this just so I know that that's my top. And I'm just pressing this to get it nice and flat. Now we're going to take some double sided tape and put it on the edges of our zipper over those stitch lines. And again, the top of the pocket is going to be longer. That's why I marked the T, just so that I don't accidentally flip this around when I'm attaching this to my lining panel. So now I'm going to remove the tape backing and we're going to place this behind the zipper pocket overlay. It sticks to my nails. And you want this to be centered.
So center it in the pocket, in the zipper pocket overlay opening as much as you can. You can flip it over and you can see if it's centered. Oops. And mine is centered. So now what we're going to do, I see a thread here that I need to cut. So now we're pulling, keeping the top part of the pocket up away from the zipper. And I'm going to add some pins here to the bottom so that the lining stays down and it doesn't end up, the other side of the pocket doesn't end up in my stitches. And we're going to stitch around this opening all the way around. And again, leave those long threads to tie off at the end so that you don't have any back stitching. So same thing as we did, start and stop. And I almost back stitched. All the way around and be careful when you're coming around where that swivel hook and rivet are again just make sure they don't the rip the swivel hook doesn't move up under your needle you don't want to hit that and you want to be careful just in case you accidentally made the hole a little too high you don't want to hit the rivet when you're stitching and also your zipper pull you want to move that out of the way when you're zip when you're stitching around there so there's a lot of things to be careful with when you're stitching this overlay so I have those long tails. I'm going to make sure they're pulled out of the way so that they don't get into stitched down into the seam here. Stopping where I started, pull long tails, and same thing as I did when I stitched the overlay, I'm going to pull the back threads and that creates a little loop for me to be able to pull up the thread from the front to the back. And there's one that's being stubborn and not pulling through. I just got to get it to come up. There it is. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to tie them off. So same thing as I did previously tie one knot and if you're worried about your knot coming undone you can also add a bit of glue to it that'll help hold it in place and I just tie a few knots just to really hold it in place Just be careful how tight you're pulling on your threads because some threads are, are not as strong as others and they break as you're tying it and you really don't want that to happen to you. Remove all your clips, all my pins, and then we're going to bring this pocket down to meet the bottom of the pocket. We're going to pin it in place and we're going to sew across the sides and the bottom using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And when we're sewing this, we're not sewing through that lining panel, we're just sewing through the zipper pocket panels. That's it. So make sure your lining panel is moved out of the way when you're sewing these.
your zipper pocket is attached. I'm just going to trim my connector here so that everything is even. If you have any overhanging, go ahead and trim it. We have our pocket, our key minder, and our beverage loop. So when it's in your bag, it can hold any size water bottle. And what's nice about this beverage loop, the way it's done, is that it, it can go nice and flat when it's in your bag. It folds up flat. It won't be in the way. So even if you had it, say, folded like that, it's not in the way. It's out of the way. It's a nice little extra alternative to making beverage loops instead of the any other way that you have this may be a way that you may want to use in any other bags now that you know how to do this technique so this is finished now we can move on to the next steps moving along we now need to create the gusset so for this section you will need your base pieces your zipper gusset pieces so both the exteriors and the linings you also need these foam. You need the gusset zipper, the zipper tabs, and the strap connectors, as well as three more D-rings for this step. So I have my D-rings here. So you'll want to have this all ready. We're going to start with the zipper, so I'm going to put all this stuff to the side. Sorry, we're going to start with the strap connectors. So for the strap connectors, I had already gone ahead and folded all of mine, but what you need to do is the same thing we did with the strap connectors that we attached to the exterior. You're going to fold the long raw edges into the center to meet, and then give it a good press. Next, we need to top stitch these. And as Kristen mentions in the pattern, she chain stitches these. You can chain stitch them as well. So that's just stitching one after the other. So there's no breaking any stitches just yet. And I still back stitch at the start and stop of each one just to make sure that those stitches don't come undone. And that's how it'll look, one big row. And I leave it together until I'm done the next one. So I'm on the next row now the next side cut the threads at the beginning and the end then we're going to take the D-rings that we have remaining and we're going to feed them through the swivel the 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 d-ring the strap connector through the d-ring place a clip on the end so i'm just clipping the ends together any long threads that I have that I see as I'm going I'm just clipping them it's not super important because these will be hidden in the seam allowance Oops. now on two of the d-rings we're going to sew them as close to the d-ring as possible so just on two we're going to sew them as close to the d-ring as possible like that and I did back stitch a couple times and if you want to get really close a zipper foot is really helpful for that and then we will base the raw edges together and on on the third one we will base the raw edges together. You're not sewing under the D-ring. You're only, only doing that on two. The third one does not get sewn up by the D-ring.
we'll just put these off to the side for now. I'm going to clip them all together though, just actually I'll hang them so I don't lose any. Next we need our zipper tape and if you haven't already, install your zipper pulls so that they zip towards each other so one from each end and i do have a video on my youtube channel for how to do this so i will link that below in the description so you can see how to put two pulls onto a zipper tape then we need the zipper tabs so what you do is take your one exterior zipper tab place it right sides together with the right sides of the zipper Then you take a lining zipper tab and you're going to flip your zipper over and you're going to place the lining side right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper. Repeat that for the other side. So exterior is right side, so the pretty side of the zipper tab is touching the pretty side of the zipper. Flip it over, you have the lining zipper tab, pretty sides touching the wrong side of the zipper. Make sure you're lining everything up. Those raw edges all have to be lined up. My zipper kind of shifted. And sometimes what I do here is I'll baste stitch my exterior to the zipper and then go back and attach the lining. And that prevents anything from shifting on you when you're sewing the lining or when you're doing what I'm doing pinning when you're pinning it just prevents things from shifting on you however I'm just gonna go for it I did it already and it was okay on the front zipper so let's hope this one works out so you're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern and again if you removed your stitch length for top stitching or anything return it back to your normal stitch length that you use for sewing going to press these away from the zipper so they will be the zipper tabs will be wrong sides together and I'm going to add a little clip at the top just to hold it all together and then we're going to top stitch these your threads you don't want those poking through your seam later if your zipper tabs are not flush with your zipper so they are not the same width go ahead and trim them so they are the same width as your zipper next we need to mark the centers first I like to mark the centers first on the zipper just so that when we're lining everything up we have everything lined up in the center because you will need center marks later so fold your zipper in half and find the center mark. And I'm just marking this with my pencil within my seam allowance. Now we're going to add some double sided tape along the edges of the zipper and the zipper tab all the way along.
we're doing this on both sides of the zipper tape. So now we're going to grab our two zipper gussets and we're going to remove the tape and I'm just going to remove the tape from one side for now. And we're going to center this on the center oops, of our zipper gusset. And if you're confident, you don't have to use it, uh, the double-sided tape. I often don't use double-sided tape here. I just pin it. But for filming purposes, I decided to use it. It's making it a little bit harder for me to stick down because the tape is sticking to everything else. But what I want it to stick to. All right, so now we're going to base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern, and I'm just removing the tape that's not stick, stuck to anything on the edge of the zipper tabs. The zipper tabs will be longer than your gusset. So we're going to sew this in place. And there is a seam allowance given in the pattern, but for the first stitching, as I'm just attaching this to my exterior right now, I like to do a basting stitch. That way there, if my seams are slightly off when I go to attach my lining to my exterior and to the zipper, you don't see the stitches if it is off in the finished bag. That's a personal preference. Now, we need to pin the zipper lining gusset to the zipper. So you were creating a zipper sandwich. So that zipper that we just basted in place was attached right sides together with the right side of the exterior. Now the lining is going to be right sides against the wrong side of the zipper. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So pin the centers, then I pin the edges, or the sides, and then I ease the rest of the way. Again, you can use some double-sided tape here, however, I'm just going to use my clips to hold this in place.
to pull this fabric away. So we will press these so they are wrong sides together. And then once you have it pressed wrong sides together, you can top stitch through that seam under the zipper. However, I'm going to wait and I'm going to attach my second lining and exterior and top stitch them at the same time. So I'll press them and top stitch at the same time. And because my exterior is a vinyl, I'm going to have to press just from the lining side. So I'll have to flip it over and press on this side, not on my exterior. So now I'm going to go ahead and repeat that whole process, but this time I'm attaching the second exterior to the remaining side of the zipper gusset or to the zipper, sorry, to the zipper gusset C piece. It's really hard when the tape is sticking to my fingers and my hands and I can't quite get it to line up. There we go. I'm just going to remove that tape again that's not attached to anything it gets stuck on the bed of my machine and then it'll make it hard for me to sew if it's sticking to everything there we go and again I'm going to sew this in place we're just repeating the same steps we did when we attached the other side Now we need to attach the lining. Again, I'm lining up the center, pinning the sides. Using the rest of the way. And then I will stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And now I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give it a really good press, Oops. give it a really good press and then we will come back and we will top stitch this seam all the way across. So I'm going to go give this a press, take yours to your iron too and give that side a press and then we will top stitch. So because I didn't top stitch the first side, I'm going to top stitch both sides of my zipper gusset. 
And that was just because I changed my stitch length. I just preferred to do it all at once. You may have already stitched the one side, so now you only have one remaining side to top stitch. tabs so that they are flush with the zipper gusset. And you want to measure your zipper gusset here to make sure it is the accurate length just in case it's not the length that it's needed to be and Kristen does give that in the pattern what the length should be. I'm just removing, actually, no, I'm removing these clips. Actually, I will leave them just for now. Change my mind. Leave them for now. Now we need to take our two D-rings. So the D-rings where we sewed up close to the hardware, we need to take those. And we need to attach them centered over the zipper tab and then we're going to baste these in place. you can add some rivets so I'm going to go ahead and add some rivets and then I'll come back and we can finish up our gusset all right so I've attached my rivets this is optional if you want to add some extra strength here where you're not adding rivets you could always do some stitching there do an X in the box that'll help hold it in place for you it's really a personal preference those are just optional so now we need to insert our foam I'm going to remove these clips. And you're placing it into the zipper gussets on each side. And I have my foam marked where the center is so that I can get this lined up centrally. And I also had a little bit of spray adhesive on the back of my foam and that just helps keep the foam in place. Oh, I shifted it. In place while I'm going to stitch everything together, all these layers. Ow. Hit my elbow on my machine. And you want to get it as close to the seam as you can where the zipper meets the zipper gusset. So into that seam. 
so that you have your seam allowance at the top here where the foam isn't because the foam is trimmed smaller than your seam allowance so that it keeps all the bulk out of that seam allowance for you when we're stitching the bag together. Because when we go to stitch the bag together, we're going to have quite a few layers here. We're going to have all the layers for the gusset and the lining and exterior front or main panels and then you'll have your binding too. So that makes it kind of bulky. So having the foam trim smaller really helps be able to sew everything together and not have all that extra bulk. Just make sure you're lining up your center marks. You want those all to line up. And I'm just kind of moving the foam out of the way as I clip, just to push it sort of down. That helps push it closer to that seam allowance where the zipper is. If you have a machine that can handle bulk, you could have cut it, your foam originally to the same size as your gussets and everything all the same size. And you could just sew right through it. That's if you have a machine like an industrial. This machine here that I'm using could handle all those layers of the, the foam with the gusset. However, for the video, I'm trying to do this so that any machine, anybody making these on any machine can do this. So now we're going to sew this and I'm just going to use a bit of a longer stitch line all the way around. So we're just basting it all the way around. It's also important to choose materials that you know your machine can handle. Use the right needle, the right presser feet as well. You know your machine the best. So just because I may use, say, a Gooderman thread or this text 45 thread, my machine can handle it. Your machine may not. You know your machine the best, so use the materials and supplies that your machine can handle. Every machine is different. As we saw when I was sewing my strap, this machine struggled with my strap because I chose to use materials and I knew it would struggle but I wasn't thinking because I know how this machine is but because I've been using my industrial so much since I got it I'm thinking industrial right now basted together that is how that looks so we're going to stick this just off to the side for now we need to move on to our actually no we're not sticking it to the side gusset sorry off to the side you do for now actually your base has some foam which is also trimmed smaller you'll want to use excuse me you'll want to use some basting spray or just a couple of things I want to give some tips for if you don't have basting spray washable glue stick Put it on the foam, flip the foam over, stick it to your material, and then take your iron and use a pressing cloth if you're using a material that, that you can't touch with your iron, put a pressing cloth over it, and press it to drive the glue. Another option, double-sided tape it down, or you can also use a piece of woven or non-woven interfacing, cut it the same width and length as your pattern piece. Your foam will be cut smaller, so then you'll put your exterior pattern piece down, your foam on top, and then your interfacing over top and fuse the interfacing all the way around and that interfacing will help hold the foam in place. Or another option is to use fusible foam 
out or use fusible Decoville light. That's another option instead of the foam. But that's if you're using foam that's not fusible, that's sew-in. So I'm using a sew-in foam. So what I did was I used a basting spray. As you can see, it's sticky. So I used a basting spray here to hold this in place. So that'll hold that in place for now until we are done what we need to do. And that's just a little tip. So again, glue stick, basting tape, woven or non-woven interfacing. The choice is really yours, which one of those you want to use. And I actually use the glue stick one the most because glue sticks are really inexpensive. You can get these at the dollar store. It doesn't have to be the Elmer's uh, name brand one. You can get the dollar store brand. It doesn't really matter. They all work. I've used it all. It's great, especially because double-sided tape is really not that cheap. And basting spray is also really not that cheap. So this is a really great inexpensive alternative and one that I use a lot and one that I recommend um, because again, it's really inexpensive and you can get these anywhere. Moving on. We now need to take our exterior gusset and place it right sides together with that zipper gusset we just completed. And this is where you'll find out if your sewing was accurate when you did your seam allowances because these should be the same width, the exact same width. If they're not, Go ahead and trim them so that they're the exact same width. That won't really affect the um, finishing of the bag because this width will just mean if you have to trim it a little bit, you just lose a little bit of width here in the depth of the bag. So if they are not the same width, trim them so that they are the same. So we're now pinning our exterior gusset to our zipper, completed zipper gusset. And I'm gonna go ahead and base that. Kristen does have us place the lining gusset, but I'm gonna go ahead and baste this exterior gusset to the zipper gusset right now, just to help hold it in place. And this is a longer stitch length still that I am using. Now I'm going to cut my thread, cut those threads. Place the lining panel so that it is right sides together with the lining side of the zipper gusset. And I'm gonna pin that all together. And the reason why I stitched that exterior first is I just didn't want anything shifting. This, this part's pretty important in my opinion because it's the gusset and everybody's gonna see this in the finished bag. And so just me wanting to be a bit of a perfectionist, I like to sew that, keeps everything in place. Now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance, give it in the pattern. And when you're sewing, check to make sure your D-ring is flipped out of the way so you don't hit your D-ring when you're sewing because you could break a needle and you can also cause damage to your machine and potentially hurt yourself as well. So make sure that D-ring is flipped up out of the way and that you also didn't install that rivet too close to where you're sewing too. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're installing that rivet. So there's one side done. And I'm going to actually go ahead and give this a press and top stitch this side. Now Kristen does have us do both sides, then flip it and top. Actually, I'll do it the way Kristen has us doing it, even though we were supposed to sew these both at the same time. So I'm going to now do the same thing, pin my exterior base gusset to my zipper gusset. And this is exciting because this is where we are getting close to being done. And just basting this in place. Again, make sure that D-ring is not flipped down. Making sure my lining isn't twisted, I'm bringing it up. So it's looking like this so far. I'm bringing it up and I'm going to put it right sides together with the lining side of that zipper gusset. And again, make sure my D-ring is out of the way. And I'm gonna check to make sure that I'm not going close to that rivet. If I'm getting close to my rivet, I just veer a little bit. Really make sure you're using an accurate seam allowances, especially when you approach that end. Now we're going to flip this entire thing so it is right sides out. You can press these edges and then top stitch along the seams. 
using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to first clip my base together. And this will help hold everything from shifting on me while I'm sewing and get me, give me that nice top stitching. And also because we have to sew the lining and exterior together in a moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all the wonder clipping now. And I find it better to do this with my lining facing out. You may find it better to do with your exterior facing out. Whatever you prefer, go ahead and do that. And I'm just putting clips all the way around both sides of the base gusset. and top stitch and you're top stitching this where it's all connected or attached to each other so you want to take your time don't rush and really make sure everything is flat and watch that d-ring doesn't flip down and get under your needle materials that your machine can handle when sewing. If you're having troubles with skip stitches, try a, try a bigger needle. Another trick I used to do was hammer the fabrics to flatten them before I top stitched, but put a scrap piece of fabric or a pressing cloth between your fabrics and your hammer so you don't cause damage to your fabric. And what that does is that really flattens it and presses it down really hard for you so that it's not as much to go through, it's compressing everything together. Um, or cut the bulk out of the seam allowance before you top stitch. Um, again, bigger needle, try walking foot, hammer, whatever you need to do, but you know your machine the best and that's why I keep saying make sure you use materials that you know your machine can handle because you do know your machine the best. Now we're going to base these edges, that's why I pinned, of the gusset, the base gusset together. basting stitching I just used a longer stitch length and any threads that I have I'm just going to go ahead and clip them off now so now we need to find the center of our gusset and I had already done that when I had originally cut my gusset I had already found the center so I'm just going to put these together and make sure those centers still line up and if they do, I'm just going to transfer the marks. So I've lined up the seams, the seams where the zipper gusset meets the base gusset. I've pinned them there and then I'm folding it. And where I folded it is right where my line should be, which it is. So I'm going to flip this down and just transfer that mark just within my seam allowance.
great way to know if you're using accurate seam allowances is when you do this. If everything lines up, I can't really see that because the basting stitches are so tight to the edge. But there is my line right there, and yeah, everything lines up. I'm going to actually mark the quarter markings now. And to mark quarter markings, and this just helps for when we're attaching the main panels, and to mark the quarter markings, take those marks you just made at the top of the zipper gusset and the base gusset, clip them together, so those center marks, clip them together, and then fold your panel because where those um, seams are, are not going to be those quarter markings on the sides. So as you can see, here's my, my seam. I have that much over on the side, and I'm just folding it. And with my pencil within my seam allowance, I'm marking I'm just marking those quarter markings. And my pencil is within my seam allowance, so I'm not super concerned about it showing up later. But use whatever tool you want that you're comfortable with. I like using a pencil because it doesn't erase when I'm pressing later on. So I've marked all the center marks. Now we need to take that remaining um, D-ring connector and you're going to place it at the center of the zipper gusset. So line up the center of the D-ring with the center of the zipper gusset and I'm just going to fold my D-ring in half, create a little crease and clip it. And you want this D-ring to just touch the top of the zipper tape. So it's just going to touch the top of the zipper tape. That's the D-ring. So I'll show you in a moment what I mean by that. Again, keeping everything centered and lined up. My D-ring is touching where the zipper tape is. So you can see here, the D-ring goes right to where the zipper tape is. So it touches right at the top of that seam where the zipper tape is. Like that. So now I'm going to base this in place. to put two holes at the open end of the loop just inside the stitching all the way through the zip the connector and the gusset so you want to make sure you put it there so I'm gonna go and make those marks I'm gonna punch the holes but we're not installing the rivets just yet and the other thing you can do is trim this so it is flush with your gusset so that's trimmed off now it's flush with my gusset I'm gonna go mark and make those holes for my rivets so I will mark those rivet holes, I will punch them, and then I'll come back and we will continue on. So now we're at the final assembly. We need this completed um, gusset. We need our lining panels, our two exterior panels, and our foam that was cut a half inch smaller. So before we continue, back when we were constructing our exterior back panel, I had mentioned that there was an option to add some rivets, but I wanted to wait until I had my foam attached. So what I'm going to do is go ahead now and I'm going to attach my foam and it's spray basted already so there's a basting spray holding this. I put some on it before because I wanted to make sure everything would line up so when I originally cut everything up I used basting spray so it still makes it a bit sticky right now which is great. I'm trying to get all the center marks lined up. Make sure this is center centered on my panel, which is hard because this handle is in the way. There we go. So now I'm going to go and install those rivets. So I'm going to punch the holes and install the rivets 
where the handles are and on my connector. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll come back and we will finish the rest of the bag. All right, so now that those are attached and I've put in the um, rivets, you could have done this again when we finished this, but I waited for the foam. I'm going to place the foam again with this one against the wrong side of my exterior, lining up all my center marks. Because remember, we trim the foam smaller. Now we want to take our panels. And this is our front, so you can decide which lining panel you want on the front and which one you want on the back. I'm going to put it so that the water bottle sleeve is on the front. Oh, beverage um, holder is on the front and the tablet sleeve is on the back just so that it's flat against my back rather than a water bottle against your back. And I'm clipping all the way around and what I'm doing right now is I'm lining up those marks that I made, all the center and quarter markings are all being lined up. And then I'm pinning the rest of the way. So first I'm lining those all up. And if you're finding still that your foam is a little bit too big, go ahead and trim it. It's okay. You can take it out and just trim it down so that it's smaller. You don't want it in your seams at all. And then we're going to baste all around these edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. We are not many steps left to finish this bag. After we get these, we clip the gusset together with panels and then sew all the way around, and then we do our binding. to do this for both panels and right now my pocket is kind of wonky so I'm flattening it out a bit. Make sure your panels are in the correct position so that you don't have your zipper on the bottom. So this is up, this is up top here so you want to make sure everything's positioned correctly so the handle goes at the top you know that the device sleeve to slip the device in has to go that way. So opening at the top. Line up your center markings and all your quarter markings. Mark every line everything up. I didn't trim any elastic overhang yet. I left that so that I can trim it after I get these panels all pinned together. So if you have any overhanging, I don't have very many overhanging, but if you do, <coughs> excuse me, if you do, you could have trimmed them prior to this or waited until we sewed these two panels together like I'm doing. When we're sewing these panels together, I'm going to sew, oops, I'm going to sew so that my lining is against the bed of my machine, just so I can see where that D-ring is when I'm coming around it, so it doesn't accidentally flip under my machine, or under my needle, I mean. And also so I can move the handle out of the way too. All right, so let's baste these sides, tops, together with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Before I do that, I'm going to take out my extension table. This is just because the weight is going to be a lot. I won't be able to hold it.
approaching where the handle is and just flipping it out of the way. I ran out of bobbin thread. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to go refill my bobbin and then I will come back and we will continue on with sewing this. All right, so now I have my bobbin refilled. I'm just back stitching over where it ran out and continuing on. this one just be careful when you get to where your water bottle loop is or beverage loop sorry just make sure it's not going to be facing out like mine is right now and I want to make sure my zipper is not zipped all the way up that we made and pin them to the quarter markings on our exterior panel. So you're going to pin it all the way around so make sure that zipper is going to be at the top of your bag. You don't want to put the zipper accidentally on this side. You want to make sure that it's center, that it's on your bag so that this is the top here panel and the zipper comes around the top of the panel. Clip it in place so the exteriors are touching. And right now I'm clipping all the quarter markings together. That's what you want to focus on first is clipping all the quarter markings together. going to pin the rest of the way, easing my fabrics in as I go. Again, when we're sewing this together, we've got to watch out for that beverage sleeve so that we don't accidentally sew it into our seam. And this gusset is fitting beautifully. Once I'm done getting it all clipped, I'm going to make snips in the curves and that'll help with the gusset to open up and get around those curves nicer. So I'm going to make little snips in the curves. Uh, 
Wow, I can't believe how perfectly this gusset is fitting. Sometimes I have to fight with a gusset, but lately my gussets on most of the bags I've made have fit perfectly. Actually, all of the bags, not most. It's been great. I love when I don't have to fight a gusset. And I am using a lot of clips. I don't want anything shifting on me while I'm sewing. So now I'm going to make those snips in the seam allowance or in the curves I mean within the seam allowance so not beyond what the seam allowance is going to be and that's just going to help those curves open up so you get easier so it's easier to sew it's just in the, within the seam allowance don't go beyond the seam allowance and I'm placing them beside my clips I use my clips as my spacing and I even go up so I come up past the curve a little bit just to help in case that needs some extra space. So now my corners are all clipped, just going to make sure all the curves are clipped. And as I said, I go past the curve a little bit just to help make sure that it will lay flat. Now we're going to sew this all together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. foot is right at them. This just means that nothing will shift on me while I'm sewing. Sometimes I take one off and another one kind of comes off beside it. That's okay. It's more important around the curves. Be careful if you're using your fingers like I am because you can accidentally hit them with your needle. So don't put them under your presser foot or anywhere near your needle. And I'm just going to move my zipper pulls <coughs> over. Just because they are dangly, I don't want them to accidentally get into my seams while I'm sewing. There's that beverage pocket, a beverage loop. I just moved that over out of my way. Kind of went off the seam a bit here, so I'm going to go back. My seam allowance is smaller, so I'm going to go back over this. Now because we're going to be binding this bag, I'm going to, after I'm done switching this all together, switch my thread to a thread that will match my binding. That way there, the stitching isn't perfect because sometimes it's not when you match binding and that's okay, it's inside a bag. And once the bag's all turned out, you're not going to notice it as much, but it helps to have a matching thread. Right now I'm just using the same thread that I sew everything else with. So this is where you can take the bag, you can turn it out, see how all your corners and everything look. And if there is any issues, 
So any pleats or anything that you're not happy with, go ahead and seam rip that area, fix those pleats if you have any, or puckers, so that they look all nice and flat for you. I'm just trying to see if that's just a pleat. Yeah, I might unpick right there. I have a corner that has a little pleat or a pucker. So I'm just going to fix that right now and that's just a matter of unpicking a few stitches and smoothing that area out a bit. That's the one nice thing about the binding method or even when you do with the birthing method, you can unpick a few stitches, turn it right side out. With the binding method, you're not turning the whole bag right side out with the lining and everything and then having to turn it again. This you're just turning out a corner, checking it out. So I'm just going to pull those stitches through so that they are not through to the exterior. the threads poking through so you see them in my finished bag. I'm going to repin that and when I repin it I'm just going to make sure everything is nice and flat and smooth. And what I'll do is I'll back stitch over top of the stitches. That'll help lock in the previous stitches. right over the previous stitches until I get to that area where I had that pucker and I'm making sure it's flat. I'm just flattening it right now even with my hand. There we go. Cut your threads. She has us trim the seam allowance. I'm going to wait and sew the other side on and then trim the seam allowances all together all at one time. And I don't need to do that on camera because you're just trimming the seam allowances down. So I will turn my camera off when I go to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and attach the second side now. And we're doing the same thing we did when we attached the first side pinning all the way around so clip all your quarter marks first lining up those quarter markings and right now when you're clipping it together your exterior will be inside the bag and your lining will be what you're seeing. You're seeing the lining right now. And when I sew this, I'm gonna sew this with the lining, this here, against the bed of my machine and the gusset up. If you prefer to sew with the gusset down, do whatever makes you feel most comfortable with sewing this together. I just find it's easier to see what I'm doing when I'm sewing with the gusset facing up. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. Some people, for the binding, after they get it all sewn together, if you have a machine that can do zigzag stitch, they do a zigzag stitch and that, they find, helps keep all the layers together and helps with attaching the binding. So if you want, you can go ahead after you have this all clipped and do some zigzag stitching just along the edges. Keep it within the seam allowance. I don't zigzag stitch. Um, I don't, not that I don't have the machine, I just don't like pulling out my other machine to do it. Maybe it's kind of being lazy, but it's a lot to pull out the other machine, get it all set up because it's set up for sewing garments. So this just time consuming. If you're finding there's anything that's going to be really bulky in the seam when we attach our binding, 
before you attach your binding, trim it out of that seam. So some extra layers. So right here where my um, strap connector is, you could trim that back a little bit. That'll help with the bulk of it. Again, going to trim or clip into those corners. I feel like I'm lost for words a lot today. I think I need more coffee. And I'm going to clip my corners. That helps everything ease in nicely. Careful not to clip your fingers and only clip within the seam allowance. And like I said, I use my clips, I clip on each side of a clip. That's kind of my measurement. Maybe it's a bit too much, but it works for me. I used to be a rebel and not clip the curves. Sometimes I don't. Just depends on my mood, I guess. But I do find it will help, especially when there's a really tight curve and it helps make the gusset fit beautifully. staple their curves you could do that the only problem you have to be careful with is not hitting the staple with your needle so you do have to be very careful when you use staples in your curves you could also use some tape or your double-sided tape I need and to hold everything together all the layers that'll help too and then your clips All right, so we're going to sew this one now. So again, my lining is against the bed of my machine, and I'm going to sew all the way around. approaching the area where that D-ring is, I'm just going to make sure it's out of the way. So I've unzipped the zipper enough where I can see if it's out of the way. And it is. rings down here. I'm going to reach in. I can feel it. it was facing down towards the corner. I want to make sure that's not that way so that I don't hit it. There's a thread stuck to me. I'm just going to turn my corners out just to see the corners. I'm not going to turn the whole bag out, although you kind of almost are, to look at your bottom corners. Just making sure there's no um, puckers or pleats or anything that I'm not happy with. And there is one, another one. So I've got to seam rip a little bit. Just a wee little bit here. I'm just going to feel where that's 
pucker is. It's right here. So I'm going to seam rip just where that pucker is, take out a few stitches, flatten it out, promise this is worth it even if it's time consuming this is worth it to do this just really makes a difference in the finished bag and you'll be much happier too with your bag Just be careful that you don't put any rips in the fabrics. So take your time to do this. All right. Oops. So now I'm just going to smooth that fabric out where those puckers were, or the pucker, not those puckers. Only one. Smooth it out, get everything all flat again, put all my clips in place, and sew. Again, back stitching over the original stitching, and that just locks in those stitches, they won't come undone. And I'm making sure not to move those clips. puckers. Another thing you may find is you have some threads that are poking out. I'm just going to pull them because you're the material from the material. I'm just going to pull it out. So we're going to leave this wrong sides out or lining sides out and we're going to trim this seam allowance down. So go ahead and go trim your seam allowance and then we'll come back and we will attach our binding. All right so I trimmed my seam allowance. We are now ready to attach our binding to our bag. And there are many methods for attaching binding to a bag. Some people use pre-made, which is store-bought, fold-over elastic. Some people use a non-fraying material such as canvas. I personally decided to make my binding because I didn't have any more pre-made binding, so I've done a pre-made method. So there are many ways that you can attach the binding. Kristen does give some steps in the pattern for how to attach it. However, I'm going to show you how I do this as well. So she has you take the bias tape, she's using waterproof canvas, so what she does is she places it around just like that and then she stitches it down and then you can pull this side over and hand stitch the second side in place. So you would stitch the one side down and then pull it over and hand stitch the other side in place. However, I am going to machine stitch this all down in one go. So what I'm going to do first is use, using some double-sided tape, I will, and I need to stand up again to get a better view, place the double-sided tape all the way around. And the nice thing about trimming your seam allowance down was that if you had any fraying material, it trimmed that all out. You don't have to worry about that sticking out after you have your binding attached, because sometimes that does happen just from you know pulling on the material moving it around the fraying does happen on the edges a little bit the other thing about the binding use a thread as I mentioned previously I changed my thread too while I was off camera change your thread use a thread that matches the binding that you're using so a same color thread this way here your stitching won't be as noticeable so I put the double sided tape all the way around. I'm going to find the end of my binding 
and I'm going to place it. And I'm just making sure it's folded nicely. So that the center of the binding, so I have it folded in half, so the center of the binding is right hitting the um, edge of my seam. And I'm just going to press it down on the tape. And as I go, I'm going to apply some clips to help hold everything in place as well. And this will just make sure nothing will shift on me. And then when I'm sewing, the clips are holding the top side while the bottom side is being held by the double-sided tape. So I'm only worrying about one side and I'm only sewing once. I'm not turning over and sewing again. I'm getting all my sewing done all in one sew. And my corners aren't always as pretty. That's okay. As long as your seams are covered, that's what the point of the binding is, to get those seams covered. Honestly, my binding often is not as nice as I wish it was. But as I mentioned earlier, or I think I mentioned earlier, nobody really sees this. It's inside the bag, and once you turn the bag out, it's even harder to see. Oftentimes, when I give a bag to somebody with binding, I'll be like, oh, the binding's not as nice inside, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. They don't see it. And even when you mention it, oftentimes they may not have seen it, and then you mention it, and they go looking for it. So now I've just stopped mentioning it, and I just leave it, and whoever the bag is being made for loves the bag, thinks it's absolutely perfect and beautiful, and they're just really excited about their brand new bag. So if we don't point out our flaws, people won't go looking for them or even notice them. So you'll notice that the tape that I applied, I applied it to the side where the lining is. That's so that when I'm sewing, I can have the lining against the bed of my machine. And I do have a more in-depth little tutorial for attaching binding to a bag. And I do go over the method that Kristen is using here for attaching it. I do sort of talk about that. Everyone has their way of doing binding, no right or wrong way. Whatever gets the job done is the way I look at it. I used to be one that didn't like binding quite so much. Now I don't mind it. I actually like it. It adds a bit of skeleton, I guess you could say, to the bag, like a, like a structure, like bones, like a spine. And that's what I like about it in the corners, especially of a bag. It gives that extra strength in corners and makes it stand up really nice. If you've never tried binding and this is your first time, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you this will help you not be so scared of it. Honestly, once I discovered a double-sided tape, I found it made binding so much easier for me because I was having a hard time with when I was going around sewing around those curves or sewing the other side or sewing on the one side that the underside would slip. And now with this double-sided tape, it holds it in place for me nothing shifts on me anymore. Now I'm approaching back where I started with my binding and I want to hide that raw edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this binding so that it's, you know, about an inch to a half an inch past. I'm going to fold this binding over so the loose end I'm going to take some double-sided tape, apply it, I'm sorry if you're hearing squeaking, for some reason my dryer is really squeaking. sticking to my nails more than it's sticking to the fabric. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it right over top of the other binding. And I'm when I'm doing that, I'm kind of tucking up that one raw edge. There's a thread here that wants to stick out. I'm going to rip that off. Flip it over 
and make sure this one's tucked under too so you don't see any raw edges at all. No raw edges come poking through. You can use as much double sided tape here as you want. There's no rule. The rule is whatever helps you get it done and be happy with the finished outcome. So there you have it. It's all pinned so this side is taped down and this side is just held with the pins. So now I'm just going to sew around the entire bag all around on top of the binding with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And again, this is why, oh, I lost my glasses. This is why it is important to use that tape and also use a thread that matches your binding. Oh, I found my glasses. So just pick a spot and start sewing. I like to start sewing where that seam is just so that I can take care of that seam first. Where it overlapped, I just want to make sure that that's taken care of. Make sure you backstitch really well. And then just keep sewing. And if you have a stiletto, it's handy to have it ready because you will need it for the corners or you may need it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. just makes it harder for me. I can hold it better with the fingers. Just wherever I need it, I use it. Remember when you're up here, if you're sewing the side that has that D-ring that is out of the way, just make sure all your hardware is out of your way. workout. My arms are always sore after I do a bag with binding.
check your binding, make sure you caught it on both sides, which I did, and that is how it looks so far. Now we're going to repeat that for the other side. So again, oops, and as I said, my binding is not perfect, but it's on and it's covering all my seams and it looks good to me. Covered in little threads. So same thing as I did previously. And you know what? This has a seam right here, so I'm just going to cut that seam right off where I joined this all together. I paused the video and went and shut off my, uh, my dryer because it was driving me nuts. So now it's quiet again. So again, double-sided tape all the way around. There's some threads here I'm just going to trim. I keep seeing more and more threads every time I look down. Place the double-sided tape all the way around. And as you notice there, I only had to sew once around. That's why I like this method that I use. But again, use whatever you are comfortable with. Um, I started with quilting when I started sewing. Well, I started making bags, but I also started quilting. And the way I learned was you fold it in half, stitch it down, flip it over, and either hand sew or stitch that down. So really any method works, and again that's all spoken about in my short little tutorial that I have regarding binding. I will link that below in the description in case you want to look at that before you do your binding. You might find some of it helpful. I just show how to do binding a little bit more in depth. You see it a bit more than you're seeing here I guess because actually you're probably seeing about the same thing. So taped from one end all the way around and I just peel some of the tape off. I don't peel the whole thing off because sometimes I find what happens is it starts sticking to other things. Again, grab the clips, make sure your tape, your bias tape is folded in half and seam against the seam, stick it down, stick a pin or a clip and then keep going all the way around until it's clipped in place all the way around. tape here. I can't find the end.
if this part is boring for you to watch, feel free to fast forward or play this in fast speed. I try not to go too fast when I'm doing this on a video, just so that if you are following exactly along with me, if you're new to this, you can keep up, or if you're experienced, this is a good time for you to, you know, take a little break, have a sip of coffee, or the choice to speed this part up and continue on. So right here at this bottom corner, I just wanted to mention, is where there's going to be a lot of bulk, just due to the fact that there's the connector there and the gusset and everything else that's in that corner. So you may want to switch to a bigger needle to attach your binding. That'll help you um, be able to sew through all the bulk. You may want to switch to a walking foot. Use whatever you feel is needed for your machine to handle that bulk there. So same thing, I'm back at the end here where I started. I'm now going to fold this under so that there are no raw edges showing. Creasing it with my fingernail. And then I'm going to add some tape and what I'll do is I'll also add some tape to keep that fold folded. So I'm going to put some tape on the edge there. threads all over. So I'm going to add a clip just to clip it all in place. So I added the tape to the other side and I'm tucking up that raw end where I started so that there's no raw edges showing anywhere. I'll have to lint brush this bag after because there's little threads from when I trimmed. All and again with the lining against the bed of the machine Starting where that's folded over, where I stopped and started, I'm going to start sewing there just to take care of that little area first. sure that hardware is facing up
didn't catch part of the seam there, so I'm just going to go back and sew a little extra row of stitches just to make sure it catches. I guess when I pulled my clip away. The nice thing about using a matching thread, so make sure everywhere else is good, that it caught your seams everywhere. The binding is done. So I'm going to take my lint roller and I'm going to lint roll the lining just because when we trimmed our seam allowance down. There's lots of little pieces that are there and I don't want them inside the bag. It also lets me see if there's any threads that I need to cut that weren't cut when I was constructing the bag. Oh, that's the only thing about cutting seams get a lot of little threads. But you can see it looks really good. I'm really happy with how this binding turned out. We have a nice bound bag. Now we're going to turn this right sides out. This is the moment of truth. really paying attention to those curves, getting everything pushed out nicely. Zip it up, give it a quick look. Isn't that pretty? Such a cute little purse or a little backpack. That'd be perfect for a little one going into elementary school or even a middle schooler could just put their lunch in there, or high schooler, I mean, they could just put their lunch in there. Sometimes they just like to carry their lunch and then they carry their binder in their hand. I know my son has a, a handle on his back, on his binder, so he can just carry it. Now the final step that we need to do is deal with this D-ring here. And remember earlier we made those holes for the D-ring. So now we're going to use those holes and push the rivets through them. And I'm going to punch holes and I'm going to put some extra rivets just because when I made my holes originally I made them a little too far down and then this is just going to kind of be flappy so I'm going to see if I can punch some extra rivet holes and then I'm going to install my rivets. So if you don't have rivets you could always sew this down right now you just take it under your machine and just sew it down. Sew between your lines of top stitching and sew a box there and that will help hold it in place for you. So I'm going to go install my rivets and then come back and we will finish up. Alright, so I've pressed my rivets in place. Now we just need to attach our strap. 
So you want to make sure your, it's not over your handle, it goes under your handle like this. And this is the nice thing, you can clip these both to one, both to one side, or make it a backpack style, just like that. And you have your crossbody strap. As well. So those are all attached. The nice thing about this is if you don't want to use your crossbody strap and you just want to use it as a backpack, you can put the crossbody strap inside one of the pockets or inside the main compartment and you're ready to go. So there you have it. Your Pirano convertible bag is now complete. You're ready to take it out and show it off to the world. Before you do that, don't forget to take some pictures and share them on social media, including in the KMG Handmade Bag Makers group on Facebook. As well, use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that we can easily find all your completed Pirano convertible bags on social media. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. I'm looking forward to seeing all your beautiful completed Pirano convertible bags. Thanks for sewing along. Have a wonderful day. Bye.